time Hey, look. Hey. Hey. Did did audio did audio go out on your little video presentation? I think it didn't, but oh. I can always fix that in post. Okay, we can fix it in post. Okay. You know, Patrick, when you sent that to me, okay, when you sent that to me, I was watching and I'm like, he should really put Space 1999. And there it was. And I'm watching and I'm like, there's not a shot in hell he would get like maybe put Buck Rogers. And there it is. And I'm like, if he's putting all this, he really needs to put Battlestar Galactica. And there it is. Not only the original Battlestar Galactica, but the new Battlestar Galactica. Well, so Battlestar Galactica was my jam, even when I was a little kid. Oh yeah. Um, you know the the the, the, the pure nostalgia. I, I actually have the full like collection of Battlestar Galactica. It's just you know, and the music of oh, all sure. of those very very good. Very, very. The music was really good. Um, and, and I tell you what, the, the new Battlestar Galactica that is off the air now, when that was on, I think I called that some of the best TV on TV. I mean, like the special effects, the drama, the story, like it was, it was good. It was really, really good. Matter of fact, to this day, I'll still go back and I'll watch the last two uh, episodes in the series. Because they're just that good. And, and the music there, too, was really good. Oh, yeah. I mean, they... The I mean, we're going to talk about a whole lot of shows and a whole lot of stuff that we really like. But yeah, I mean, Battlestar, the, I mean, Lauren Green uh, had been on Bonanza. Like, you never really expected Lauren Green to, to take the role on some sort of sci fi show. Right. And the same thing when they did the remake and they cast uh, the, the, uh, Adama for that, Edward J. Almost, you just never envisioned Edward J. Almost. I mean, if you go back in his career and you look at what he's done, yeah. I mean, he did Blade Runner. Yep. Uh, but like he's his body of work is not sci-fi, and you're like, oh, how did they get this guy? He did a really good. Um, oh man, I'm not going to remember the name of the movie. I'm, I'm so bad with names of like. Uh, I'm just my memory is like not what it used to be. But uh, it was it was a movie about him being in a gang, or, or I can't remember the name of the movie. But it was a fantastic movie, uh, and he is a really really good actor. And the fact that they got him in that series was was just terrific. Just yeah, terrific. I mean, for a for a TV show that was on the Sci Fi Channel, for um, sure to get uh, Oscar nominated if not oscar award winning actor uh him and uh mary mcdonald that played the president are both like a list like yep serious actors yep to to play in some sort of sci-fi channel tv show and, and they 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 proved their worth because they were both fantastic oh. in, in in their their characters you know, we should probably explain like what the hell we're doing here because I, I I was so thrilled when when you like sent the idea of what we were gonna do today to me. Basically, what I saw was thinking about doing a sci-fi show, and he sent that to me, and I was like, "Count me in. I, I want to be part of it. I just yeah, want to, like, want to do it." Right? I mean, that was it. I mean, I know that there are a few people in 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 our normal circle of friends that um that are sci-fi geeks just like us. I mean, mm -hmm. I knew I I've known that you were a sci-fi guy and a, a Trekkie guy and a B9 guy forever. Um, and we never get to talk about no. those topics because we're always doing other things. I was like, I'm I just at this point I just want to I want to take a, a a a couple hours and have some fun, talk about other things than what we normally talk about. And just cut loose, and I, and I love it. Yeah, and I love it for several reasons. Here, here, here are some of the reasons. I just did a uh, interview with Mike Peterson on on his show, and we we talked about like not a lot of vaping. We talked about like you know where I came from, my hobbies, DJing. We talked a lot about DJing uh, and, and my career, you know, uh, as an engineer for a telecommunications company. And it was just refreshing. It was refreshing to not 
talk about vaping for a little while. Uh, Dimitri and I are doing like that that live COVID show uh, where we're trying to get people's minds off of COVID, even though we're talking about COVID a lot uh, on the show. Um, and, and, you know, this opportunity came up this morning. I did a video, like I've been kind of all over the place, not many reviews, but kind of all over the place doing other stuff, which has been kind of liberating for me. And, and I think this show is going to be similar to that. Yeah, I, mean, I just, I, I want to, I, I just want to de like fragment all the crap that's in my head. I mean, obviously everybody is stuck at home because of the COVID-19 and, uh, they got a lot of time in front of their TVs. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think by this point, everybody's sort of, uh, you know, done all the other stuff in their house that they can do. They're, they're <laughs> they, all they got now is, is, is time. Yeah. And there are plenty of like old shows. I mean, my whole thing is I really like classic sci-fi. I like yeah, old stuff. And there's a lot, you have a lot of opportunities to, to see some of these. Now, I mean, obviously, some of them don't hold up as well as others when it comes to, you know, production design and special effects. But that's the whole point. Yeah, that is the point. I agree with you. Uh, you know, another reason why I'm really enjoying this is because I can't do this with my BFF, Dimitri. Right. Every time I, I bring up or talk about sci fi, he calls me. Well, what's the name of the show? A geek. Right. He calls me a geek. And like he doesn't like to talk about any of this. So uh, thank you, Patrick. Thank you for allowing me to talk about this stuff. Um, yeah. It, it, some of it holds up. Some of it doesn't. Uh, it, it's nice to go back, though, and, and see like I like models. Mm -hmm. I like I like to see the ships in models and the way they used to film them uh, and the way they used to shoot them. Uh, it, there's there's a purity to that that I really appreciate, right? Versus yeah. like all of the digital effects that that we have today. So I mean, I was just talking to you a while ago before we went live. I was talking about picking up and watching uh, uh, an old show that was made in the '70s called UFO. And the guy that made that show, Jerry Anderson, um, is uh, kind of known for the Thunderbirds. I mean, I don't know if you remember that. That whole show is done with marionette puppets and yeah, stop yeah. animation. And everything is practical photography, one frame at a time. And like you said, models, everything. So you look at like, I was watching it last night, and um, there's a scene where the moon base, you know, they have a moon base. And obviously... It's a, an actual miniature that's been, you know, fabricated and placed on a, on a moon surface, uh, and then photographed, you know, uh, and then when the, the the actors have to get into their uh, super uh, futuristic aircraft, and fly through space, you can see almost you can almost see the wires. Yeah, know? that's great though. And I mean, you're, you're fantastic. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, like UFO is, is something that I never watched. Uh, and I think it's cool that we we talked about this because now I have an opportunity to watch something and enjoy something that, that I never watched. Right. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I think I'm watching all of the current sci-fi, looking forward to all of the new sci-fi that's coming out, even Star Trek Discovery, even <laughs> even that turd. Um, and we, we, we might spoil some stuff, too. So, like, if you guys don't like spoilers, like, cover your ears, okay? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to throw the spoiler alert up for a minute. There you so go. Everybody can understand. But, you know, I mean, we're talking about a lot of old stuff, but even stuff, I mean, people may not have watched these old shows. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that never watched Battlestar Galactica, even the remake, because it's been off of TV for about, I don't know, 10 years or so now. It's yeah, seems. at least, yeah. And uh, it, it, that show, if you watch it, if you were watching it now, like there are certain things in that show that you're like, okay, so there's there's one episode where there's a virus <laughs> on the show, and you're like, oh wow, this whole I mean, and the special effects are still amazing. The writing is amazing, even now. I mean, it's not like you can improve on already awesome writing. No, but yeah, no. a lot of these shows have have relevance yeah. now. I mean, and, yeah, and it, Battlestar Galactica, the new one, is definitely something that holds up. Uh, I'll never forget when, because I, I missed Serenity, too, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then, like, I, I, I read about it, and I saw a lot of people really liking it, so I decided to, to binge watch it. I mean, this is years ago still, but boy, did I like that series. That was a really, really good series, and, and another one 
uh, that's that's worthy of some uh, binge watching. Yeah, I mean, Bill's even uh, commenting in the chat room about Space 1999 and UFO and Land of the Giants and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Amazing old classic sci-fi shows. Yeah, Space 1999. I remember growing up. I, I think I think it was like on a local channel nine uh, growing up, and they used to have promos for it all the time. And, and a snippet that they took out of the show was "Helen and Nothing Is True." That was it. And like every time I, I think about Space 1999, I think about that phrase: "Helen and Nothing Is True." Um, well, and the the thing that Space 1999 did differently than other sci-fi shows is if you watch the opening credits of every episode. They show like snippets of that episode. Yep. Like this is what you're going to see. And if you watch Battlestar Galactica, the remake, they also did that. The opening of every yeah. show was different. And they showed you like keystones from the plot throughout the story in that first montage of video. Yep. Very, very similar. Uh, and and I, I said before it was cool because I know Bill, uh, he probably wants to talk about like my B9 collection. We'll get there. But I looked I looked down at a, like right now I'm pointing at Kirk uh, and that's what's his name from uh, Space 1999. Uh, but, but oh, we get all the way down here to the robot, uh -huh. B9 robot. And and that's um, from, oh, the, the what do you call it, man? The something man. Uh, it, it's from an episode it, it, where it's like... Uh, it's the regular, uh, the regular world, and like the dark world, and uh, you know this. And I happen to have that that B nine right here. That's the black and white one that you see right there. There he is, right there. And I, I have um, kind of a really big. I, I, I when it comes to robots, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a huge B nine fan. Uh, as I a matter of fact, never have known that. It's like ridiculous, and I'll, I'll throw this up on the screen right here if you can see this. That is my B9 collection, and that's only part of it, right? This, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor here. This guy right here, that's the Remco B9 robot, and he really doesn't, he's not to scale when you look at like all of these other guys, he's not. But the Remco robot was actually used in a couple of the episodes, these are really, really hard to get, almost impossible to get. Um, with the acrylic still in place up here with a full box and working because uh, he actually did kind of move around and he lit up and stuff. Um, I, I got him off of eBay just like this, no box or anything else, but just so that I could have him in my collection. And there's a couple others. This is the really, really tall um, remote control one. I think he's like two feet tall. This is a uh, this is a, a model. This This model here actually does play some lost in space or some robot sounds and um, some of them in, some of them are in Japanese and some of them are, are in American but this was before the days of like sound chips so there's actually like a little plastic record inside of him that <laughs> plays the sounds yeah I'm serious man it's so cool <laughs> oh god yeah I guess I guess I came to the right show right yeah uh you know my my knowledge of B9 is extremely limited. Um, because Lost in Space was not was not my jam, but yeah. Well, my favorite, my favorite one that I've ever came come in contact with is uh this one right here. If I could get this up on the screen, that is a full size one. This was um created by scratch from a former Kodak uh engineer. Uh, and I, I found him on the B9 Builders Club, and he was local to Rochester. And I, you know, I told him I was like a huge fan. And he actually invited me over his house to come and meet his full size B9 robot. And you know, he had all the lights, and the, you know, he'd had all the phrases from uh, the show and the background noises. So yeah, that was like, and I'm I'm young there, you could tell. But uh, that was a real treat. That was a real treat. Yeah, I mean, um, you've got a lot more stuff. Than I do. I mean, I, 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 I have a different, I have a different uh, addiction. I, I'm a huge Batman fan, so I have uh, thousands of dollars of Batman porcelain statues up on top of a bookshelf, and I'm not going to try to tweak the camera to get to it. But oh, you should have taken photos. I should have because I, I, I got, I got some more stuff to share with you guys well, too. <laughs> we'll look at your pictures this time, and if we do this again sometime in the future, I'll have Batman pictures then. Okay, good, good. But, so, uh, yeah, like, so I see you have. Uh, what do you collect? So you collect Batman stuff, uh -huh. right? and and Funkos. I have a whole bunch of Funkos back here, but I collect mainly the music Funkos. So okay. I have a lot of like uh, 
rock musicians and Jimi Hendrix and Lemmy from Motorhead and horror movie stuff, which is not your is not your thing. Um, if you if I move my head just right, you can see my Pennywise the Clown collection behind my ear over here. Still sci-fi, yeah. In a way, in a yeah. way, um, yeah. So I, I I definitely like my probably my biggest collection. Well, is vaping gear, but uh, outside of vaping gear, it's probably the B nine. Um, but also, I can pull a couple of thing, a couple other things up here. Um, I am a collector of Star Trek phasers, whether they be toys or, well, I can't say real because there's no such thing as a real Star Trek phaser. Uh, but here's some of my, uh, and, and look, there's me and Dimitri right down there. That's, that's the, tr that's the chunky version of Dimitri right here too. Bro man right there. Yep. Um, so there's some of the Star Trek phasers. I also have like some ships, uh, some tricorders you could see there. Um, and now I go back to my B9 collection. I think if I go this way. I see more of the phasers, right? And uh, tricorders too, uh, or uh, communicators. I do like, I the like original flip phone. Yep, yep. And a matter of fact, I just got a um, a new one. This is this one's really nice too. It's like uh, it's like Bluetooth too, <laughs> and I can connect it to my phone, and I could actually take calls with this. Mm -hmm. I, I should I should take a call with this uh, from Dimitri because he would really call me a geek then for sure. <laughs> I'm talking to you on my my uh, Star Trek the original series tricorder or mm -hmm. uh, communicator right communicator. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean you know even Bill's got a little love for Batman. Any comments there? I love the original Batman serials from the 1940s. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll maybe talk about that at some point. But um, so I was thinking, you know, and you and I sort of sort of uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, the differences in tone between, like, the original series of Star Trek, and I just, I think all sci-fi in general. At some point, people uh, lost their, I don't want to say hope for the future, but, you know, used to be, you know, uh, you would watch shows and, and, and there was a lot, you know, more of a perfect society or a more perfect society and uh, showing what we could be. And now it's like, this is what we are going to be because you guys are bad. I mean, all the TV shows and sci-fi shows and even the books, it's all populated with like really dark futures and and uh, really bad stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think with uh, I think it's really noticeable with Star Trek, right? Uh, what, what Star Trek, how it started out, where it is today, uh, how it is much, much different. You know, they say, well, it's not. It's not your Star Trek. It's a different kind of Star Trek. It's for a different audience. Then why fucking call it Star Trek? Yeah. Call it something else. Rename right? everybody. It doesn't have to be Star Trek. Yeah. I, I don't mind. I don't mind that you're creating something new, something different, something original. But stay off of my Star Trek. You know what I mean? I, I, think, the, I think the best Star Trek to have come out in the past several years is... Um, why am I the not? Orville. What? The Orville. The Orville. I, why couldn't I remember that? I don't know. The Orville. I think the Orville is some of the best Star Trek to come out, and it's not even Star Trek. Oh, well, no. You definitely or can see that show, and you can see that Seth MacFarlane loved Star Trek, the original series. Absolutely. Absolutely. Loved I, I, I love all the characters in that show. I love the writing. I, there isn't anything about that show that, that I don't like, and I believe it is coming back for a third season. Yeah, but it's going to be on Hulu. Yes, it's going to be on Hulu, right? So, yeah, I mean, um, obviously, here, just think about this. Remember when they had uh, Star Trek DS9 was on, and there were like... By the way, the only Star Trek series that I didn't like. The There's two episodes of DS9. I think it's two episodes, but I know of, I'm pretty sure of one, where they have to go back in time, and it's the Trouble with Tribbles episode. Yep. And all of the current cast members on DS9 had to gear up and dress and and style yeah. themselves like they were on the original show and the only episodes of, of deep space nine that i liked was um, that those. you can see i mean it's like it's like you can see people you know slamming on the brakes and ch having to completely remodel how they act and 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 the just the lighting to match the lighting um and do color correction and everything on the actual print itself you're like wow you know they're, they're just using a whole different palette of colors um everything's brighter uh everybody's personality was brighter hmm. uh, it, there's so much negativity 
There is. There, there, there's a lot of negativity. There's like even with um, I, I I said this to you before. I said I think I think if Gene Roddenberry were to see Star Trek the way Star Trek is today, I think he I think he'd turn over in his grave. I really do because well. I don't think I don't think it was his vision of what they're doing with Star Trek. And he, there's something about his son that I don't like. I really, I'm not a huge fan of Roddenberry's son, but uh, like even Picard and, and I know you haven't seen Picard. Uh, I've definitely seen the whole series. Didn't think it was horrible. And I could, I could talk about why, um, but like they're dropping an F bomb in almost every Picard's episode. Like I drop F bombs all the time, but I just don't like when you hear it coming from Star Trek, it's like, Really? But like, why do you need to put that in track? I don't understand. I just don't get it. Yeah, I mean, you would think over the years that Star Trek, even the next generation was on, right? Uh, that, uh, you know, facing the Borg and all of the episodes that Q was in and was the protagonist uh, or the antagonist, Um that somebody would have lost their cool and dropped an F bomb. If they were going to do it, they would have done it then. So why are they doing it now? I can't believe that the, the, uh, you know, the, their opponent or their, whatever their struggle is now is any worse than the reality threatening stuff that they fought before. Oh, for sure. And by, by the way, you mentioned uh, one of my favorite uh, villains in sci-fi, yeah. the Borg. Oh, the Borg, the Borg. And when it comes to Picard, there were so many missed opportunities. Like, how how do do the Borg relate to the uh, the synthetics and like this synthetic creature that they're trying to call? Like, how do the Borg relate to them? How how does it all relate to Viger and the planet that Viger the the, the planet that that took Viger in right and, and created that whole ship so Viger can create can can finish his mission? Like like so many missed opportunities. But I tell you what. Star Trek The Borg should be a series, right? It, it should be like, where did the Borg come from? How did they, how were they created, right? See, I think, I think this is crazy, right? I think we're headed to becoming Borg. Hear me out, all right? Hear me out. Because we have information at our fingertips now, right? We, we Actually, we have too much information, whether it be our cell phones or our iPads or our laptops or our computers. It's like information, information, information. So what do they want to do? They want to get that information to us even faster. And, and what are they going to be able to do eventually? They're going to be able to like plug it directly into our brains, right? So when we're plugged into this, are we not then plugged into everybody else? Are we not then a collective? And do not do we not then become Borg? See, I think the Borg came from us, right? And I think it would be such a cool, such a cool series to do to find out, like, where did the Borg really start? Because I think they're a fascinating, fascinating uh, enemy. Well, I mean, just the, just the, um, you know, the, 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 the Borg Queen in, in uh, first contact, you know, that's the first time you see her um, and to see that they're not a logic driven species after all, no. like she's, she's ruled by passion. She's ruled by, you know, desire. That's very human. So, yeah, I mean, if she was, for example, the first one, you know, you don't, then yeah, you can see that they're not a, as robotic as what we, they're portrayed in the regular series. Um, and you don't know what's going on inside. Right, that that's why I, that's why I think it's it's it would be a fantastic series. And Ali, okay, so since we're talking about this, two of my favorite franchises, obviously, are are Star Trek and Star Wars. Okay, as long as it has a star in it somewhere, you know, I'm like a happy guy. Like my my parents will say, hey, uh, you know, you, you should watch this movie. And my first question is, does it have robots? And they're <laughs> like, no, it doesn't have robots. I said, well, does it have space and spaceships? And they're like, no, it doesn't have that. I'm like, all right, I'll probably get around to watching it. <laughs> but they don't like they don't like sci-fi stuff either. Um, but here, here's an idea. Like, this is another series that I want, uh, especially with with Disney uh, taking the helm now and, and putting out more Star Star Wars uh, content. I want to see Star Wars Vader. I want to see a series that focuses on Darth Vader. Another one, an another one of the greatest sci-fi criminals or sci-fi evil people 
uh, that has ever been created, right? But mm -hmm. like, if you read stuff like uh, about Vader and, and like after he got his suit, there were so many issues with the suit. There were issues with him, like it was itchy, it didn't work right. There were like he had to get in and out of it. Like there were all kinds of issues with the suit. I want to see that in a series. I want to see him go through that. I want to see him like like you know in in like. Okay, so like the last scene of Rogue One where you see Vader at his very fucking best, right? I want to see it like that in a series. That's what I want to see. Well, and I, I think mean, it'd be huge. You don't read comic books, I don't think. But no, uh, I'm not a comic book guy. When Marvel acquired Lucas, or not Marvel, when Disney acquired Lucas, they already had Marvel Comics. So they brought all of the comic book publishing, all of the extraneous other publishing stuff that had happened in the Star Wars universe under their umbrella. So there were years where Lucas, uh, when it was by itself, licensed out their characters for novels and they ha hired people to write novels. And all of those books, well, not all of them, but a, a good number of them got removed from canon. And yeah, then after, that, yeah. after they did that, uh, then Marvel started publishing series of books based on the star wars character star wars universe and they actually have a darth vader title that probably that does cover many of his exploits from the the very atrocious no scene <laughs> uh you know ruined the first the, the prequel series forever in my mind um and then you know that period of time between the no and the uh <laughs> You know, the, the beginning of Star Wars, A New Hope. So, yeah, the, there there is content. It's just not video content. Um, yeah, it would be great for them to do a dark. Oh, movie. I would love to see it. And, and David, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's that's why Vader's suit was actually out of date and uh, inferior uh, to to a lot of the uh, the other technology that was available at that time, um, because the Emperor didn't want him to uh, to wanted him to be angry wanted him that wanted that that anger because with that anger you know with fear comes anger anger comes power you know it, it made him more powerful right so yeah you're right david so yeah i mean you, um I, I can't answer this question because i don't have disney plus but uh i would I, i'm really interested to watch the mandalorian um you know sean's asking uh, wait you haven't watched the mandalorian no, i don't i don't i don't have disney okay plus. wait a second so you haven't watched the mandalorian and, and you haven't watched picard what the oh, fuck are you doing? i'm waiting okay because um, disney plus is putting content out in chunks and what i want is there to be more than one show that i want to watch on disney plus before i before you get the, the before, before you do that. Yeah, that makes sense so, that makes sense they're, they're, um, they're going to come out with Marvel comic series is on there. They're going to come out with other Star Wars series is on there. I'm going to wait for there to be some stuff so that I can justify jumping in on that. Then I'll do it. Yeah, it makes sense. And, th you know, there's going to be a lot of new content for, for Disney Plus, And I'm excited about that. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk about, Sean, I'm going to answer your question a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of talk about um, uh, Obi-Wan, right? That was supposed to be a series. Uh, but, like, I guess there's issues with it or or they're, 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 like, working out the logistics. Hopefully that will still be a series. Um, I would say I would say on a, a score from 0 to 10 on the series Mandalorian, man, I tell you what, I love the Mandalorian, and I would give it a 10. Not only do I love the Man Mandalorian, but, boy, for Disney, I mean, it's just so smart because, let's admit it, you want to call it Baby Yoda or you want to call it the child. Uh, it is a a marketing bonanza. They are going to sell billions of dollars worth of Baby Yoda or the child. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's there's something that's coming out in time for Christmas. Okay, this is crazy. I want to talk about this. is a great show to talk about this stuff. When you see the animatronics of Baby Yoda, it's very robotic. Almost, almost borderline fake looking, right? They could do a better job with raising baby Yoda's ears and some of his expressions. They could do a better job. See, what I told my friend was they're doing it on purpose. Here's why they're doing it on purpose. Because if he looks like that, they're going to be able to more easily create an animatronic baby Yoda or child that you're going to be able to purchase. And sure enough, sure enough, I think coming out this December 17th, there is an animatronic Baby Yoda coming out. You could order it right now. You could pre-order it right now on Amazon. Uh, I'll pull it because I've ordered three of them. 
All right. One is for me. One is for my niece. I hope my niece doesn't watch this for Christmas. And the other one is to flip on eBay in case it becomes the hottest toy of the year. Okay. So I got a plan. I got a plan. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to find that on, on Amazon for you. <laughs> That's hilarious. Right. Um, it's better Star Wars than, uh, yeah. David Hood says that The Mandalorian is better Star Wars than the last series of movies. Now, I will say, I will say, I have a, a soft spot in my heart for Rogue One. Um, not only does because it 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 does flow in continuity, it, it's an important story that's important to the main story arc, but there's no crossover with the main characters from the main story arc. Plus, it's an amazing. I mean, if you just take it out of Star Wars and just put it into the this is an a war movie. It's 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 an amazing movie. Um, I uh, I wasn't super uh, psyched about any of the last the the three um, in continuity like main story movies. Uh, the Last Jedi, you know, none of those really got my attention as much. Oh, I would be happy to talk about those three movies. Uh, definitely not the middle three because, like, let's just forget those ever happened. Although the last one wasn't too bad but when, when Anakin actually became Vader. But do you, you know how long I've wanted to debate the last three movies with, of all people, Grim Green? Right? Because I, I, let's admit it. You're not a true Star Wars fan until you get a tattoo of a stormtrooper on your neck. Okay? I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a true Star Wars fan. Um, and I know he liked, he liked Last Jedi. I thought it was an abomination and a slap in the face of every Star Wars fan that ever lived. That's how I thought about, you know, The Last Jedi. Um, and, and one thing, one thing for absolute sure, because I know there's people out there, uh, who, who I have talked to after The Force Awakens, uh, because I called it. I said, and, and Nick will tell you, because I, I had this conversation with him in a bar in France. This was after The Force Awakens happened. I told him, I said, Ray is a Palpatine. And he's like, no. Other people I've talked to, I said, Ray is a Palpatine. Now, whether that was slammed together for the for the last, you know, the last movie, I don't know. But there, there were several things about Ray that that I just knew she was a Palpatine, and even like when the the, the last Jedi came out, and everybody's like, "See, she's nobody." You're wrong, Phil. She's not a she's not a, a, you know a Palpatine. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. And, and you know, you know what did it for me? You know what, what what clued me into it was number one in the Force Awakens. She's angry. You you can see that that there's a lot of anger in her. Right, that's number one. But number two, this is what really did it for me. In the movie with her lightsaber, and we're going to get to lightsabers in a little bit. Right, she did a stabbing motion with her lightsaber. The only person in another Star Wars movie to ever use that motion with a lightsaber was Palpatine, and and that's when I knew she was a Palpatine, and I was fucking right. Ha. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, the, there's a lot of people that uh, uh, reference in that that final end, you know, uh, the the closing scenes of that movie where all of the Jedi are speaking to, you know, you hear the voices of all, and they're tr they try to name everybody, um, and uh, Osaka Tano is one of the voices, and they yeah. let's cast her for the Mandalorian for next season. And you know, there's there's a, a lot of people that are uh, that are super excited because it's Rosario Dawson is going to play Osaka Tano in the you know so there that's one of the voices that was in that scene that just yeah yeah and see th this is where this is where I I um am not as knowledgeable when it comes to like Star Wars e even Star Trek and everything it's like yeah. the books and the comics and the and and everything that's beyond the movies. That's where the real fans exist, right? right. I mean, that's where the people who know everything about Star Wars, that's where they live and exist and, and thrive. Um, that that's not me. Like I'm just kind of like the movie guy. I got I, I there's things that I like. I'm I'm like like the TV guy and the movie guy, but like the books and stuff like that, I, I don't really follow that kind of stuff. She's she's actually uh, Anakin Skywalker's Padawan from the Clone War series. Okay, yeah, Clone Wars. Like, see, there you go. That that's a series that I I never watched. I never got into. 
but it was you know it's a cartoon so you know you're an old fuddy duddy you wouldn't watch cartoons and by the way my my guess may have been right okay because there he is there's the star wars the child animatronic edition aka baby yoda mm -hmm. and look at this look at this this wasn't a pre-order currently unavailable so i'm figuring my ebay listing i'm gonna get at least five thousand dollars from him. <laughs> yeah see uh you know glenn uh says in the chat room that it's uh, highly suggested that you watch uh the clone wars i don't know it's just like there's something about there's something about cartoons that like uh, there there was one uh cartoon series that i watched but i was a lot younger then and it was the uh, the Star Trek animated series, uh -huh. and those are uh, those are on I think Amazon Prime right now. You can actually watch those for free. Um, I know, Glenn. I know I should watch them. I really should. But um, yeah, you know the there's so much content. Like right now, when you don't have anything that you can you can't go to work, or you know if you're not one of those people like I'm essential, I have to go to work. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's amazing opportunities to to catch up on a lot of stuff like all the original star treks are on one of the streaming services if not uh, more than one uh star trek the next generation is on netflix uh you know all these other ones space 1999 is on uh amazon prime you know they're, they're these are all the, the thing is is you know a lot of people won't watch them because they're old and the sci-fi the special effects may not be great but the story is still there it is. The story is still there. It may not be, uh, you know, computer uh, and, uh, computer graphics or, you know, or the spaceships may look like, you know, 70 spaceships or 60 spaceships or whatever, but the story is still there. Absolutely. Yeah. Another uh, idea for people too, um, especially fans of, of Star Trek, uh, if you've been through all of the series and if you've been through all of the movies, uh, go to YouTube and type Star Trek fan film, right? Mm -hmm. There's tons of content on YouTube uh, uh, and some really, really good, like um, Star Trek Continues, okay? That is a fantastic series. The guy who played Kirk did a fantastic job. They tied a lot of the old series and old characters into this basically fan film created uh, stuff. Uh, just great, great content for you guys to check out. Well, and not only that, but uh, there are actually a few professional quality Star Trek fan films. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but uh, there's one that's actually uh, the guy that played Chekhov in the original series is in it. Is in it, uh, and it's it's a bunch of like uh, Hollywood insiders that are nerds, and they went together and made a. Star Trek fan film on their off time. Um, shoot, I'll remember it in a minute. But it it's really good. I mean, obviously, you got the right, you got the actors, you have high quality special effects guys on their day off, set at their computer at home doing the the necessary stuff. Um, even Star Wars fan films. There's a whole bunch of Star Wars fan films that are out there. Um, though you know, it's just finding the finding the. Um, the time, yeah. yeah. Walter Koenig. Thank you, David Hood. He came up with the name of Chekhov, um, which is really funny because the guy on Space 1999, the the character, the main character, his last name is Koenig. Yes, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, speaking of fan films, if you've never seen the uh, fan film, it's I think it's basically called Vader Episode One, Shards of the Past. Uh, oh boy, is that good! And yeah. then. The they did a teaser for episode two, but I think there was some like drama there or something that happened, and they they never uh, they never, uh, or maybe it's coming. I don't know, but they never filmed episode two. That that's a really fun thing to watch. So too. If you're looking at like geeky like YouTube channels, there's one that's called Bad in the Sun on YouTube, and it's uh, all it is uh, is like a bunch of like actors in Hollywood and comic book nerds. They they write. Uh, it, they're generally like celebrity deathmatch type things, stories or movies about, and they have uh, they have a, a really good one that's a Batman versus Darth Vader, and Batman flies into space in the Bat Jet and comes across the Death Star, and uh, uh, Darth Vader has captured Superman. 
and Batman really? is going to rescue Superman. That and sounds like some fun stuff to watch. It's actually very good, and the, the the effects and stuff. But these are all like fairly fairly good quality. But then if you're into the comic books, there's a whole lot of superhero versus superhero ones on there. Um, and the one I really like is there's a group that 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 do videos that are space battles that are just like space battles, and they actually have one where it's like Star Trek versus Star, versus Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, battle. I've seen all those too. I love those. Yeah, and, I think they're fantastic. I get a chuckle because you can <clears> tell when the, when one of them is made by a fan of Star Wars, the Super Star Destroyer that comes in, the Executor comes in and destroys everything at the end. Yeah. And if if you're a if you're a Star Trek fan. <laughs> And you make one, the Borg show up and assimilate the the Empire. Or absolutely, uh, absolutely. See, there's a, there a definite scale difference between a Starfleet capital ship and a uh, you know Star Wars Imperial battle. Uh, uh, and I was just going to say that I was just going to say that because like even on YouTube, like I've done that too. I've I've seen like comparisons of uh, they'll do comparisons of speed, the speeds of the ships. They'll do size comparisons, like and like they'll show you like the smallest sci-fi ships to the largest sci-fi ships. Yeah. There's like I, when I get wrapped up in YouTube and I start following that, like that's I, a rabbit hole. I could do that for hours. I could do that for hours. Now, Dirk, Dirk is talking about something here that we should talk about because it's going to lead to something else. And that is, of course, Spaceballs. Oh, yeah. Spaceballs was a fantastic movie. And yeah. you know what's sad? You know what's sad is that Mel Brooks probably could not write a movie today because he would offend everybody. Oh, because, yeah. Because that, that's the kind of world that we live in now, right? Everything's got to be so politically correct, and we have to be so afraid of hurting people's feelings that we can't even do good tongue-in-cheek comedy that, like, like Mel Brooks was known for. Known no, for. I mean, I, I, I actually just purchased Blazing Saddles on uh, Vudu, which is a streaming service, um, which is probably one of the funniest. Uh, Absolutely you know movies in general but you know just thinking about like westerns i'm a, I, I like westerns too um but you know that movie there's no way at all ever like if somebody came with that to hollywood with that script today nobody would green light that film nobody would say and i'll finance it nobody would say i'll you know i'll will distribute it nothing and that's sad. And I don't want to live in that world. Unfortunately, we do. We, like, there, there's one scene in Blazing Saddles that that makes me laugh, and it's 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 racist by by oh, today. Is, is, is it's it when he rides into town, and the when he rides into town, and they got the welcome sheriff thing, yeah. and they say we'd like to welcome our new, and they go nigger, yeah. and and the 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 thing rolls up. And that was the end of the celebration because they didn't know he was black when he was riding in, right? The first time I saw that, and it's not because I hate black people, and it's not because I'm I'm racist or I'm prejudiced. It's because it was fucking funny. It's yeah. because it was funny, right? No, we that can't do funny anymore. We can't do funny because it because of, sometimes funny offends people. Oh and yeah, we, no, we can't offend door, anybody. We can't offend anybody. That is <sighs> hilarious. The the guy's up in the bell tower and he's looking out with the thing. And he turns to the crowd and he's like, the sheriff, from, and the bell rings, boom. Right. And they're like, I think he said the sheriff is near. And they said, no, I said the sheriff's up, boom. And then finally he comes around the corner and they're like, the sheriff, oh, you know, it's mm -hmm. a hilarious movie. I mean. Going back to Spaceballs, when they're they're combing the desert, which they were like literally combing the desert. And like, no, I haven't found any. I didn't see it. I ain't found shit. Right, <laughs> they don't do that anymore. No. But it's fun. why it's funny. Stop, stop taking stop taking life so goddamn seriously. Lighten the fuck up, America. Serious. Like I, I have had it. I, I've had it. Is it. You, you've been cooped up for too long. Oh, dude, I had like. Uh, listen, I, 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 my, my poor mother called me this morning to see how I was doing. And we started talking about something and we got into media and like, I just like, I just opened up and started yelling, yelling uh, 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 because I, because I just hate, I hate what's going on with mainstream media right now, with the press right now, with our government right now. I can't stand it. I cannot stand 
what's going on right now. But wait, we're not talking about that. We're talking about sci-fi. Let's get back to sci-fi. <laughs> no, because <laughs> because I was, I was getting ready. And then you know, and then I did that that video today. Do you get it? Which I think is a really important video. It's it's short. Go check it out. Um, and now this is relaxing to me. This is relaxing. I'm I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I'm sorry. Well, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, tone is a big deal, and that you know that goes back to the what we were talking about a while ago about the perfect society. All the show, all the movies and shows had sort of a hopeful outlook. And then at some point, everything got to be like the world's turned to crap. And this is all we're going to get from now on is like movies that show the dark, like the all of our fucking mistakes need to be replayed over and over again. Yeah. Um, I know. know. Everything's got Mad Max. Every, you know, the, the yeah, that Mad Max feel, that dark civilization you know. is destroyed and it's right. every man for himself. Um, and, you well, know, you know it, it, it's sad. It's sad. That happy doesn't sell, you know. I mean, it, look at the media right now. I, you know, it, it's 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 as much fear mongery as you could possibly put on the screen, and, and that's what people seem to be attracted to. And that's sad. It's a very very sad thing. Well, um, but anyway, what I was saying before is when when he when he said spaceballs, that leads me in, into another movie that people just absolutely need to see, and that's Galaxy Quest. Oh, I love that movie. One of uh, one of probably the movie that I have watched more than any other movie, right? Every time I watch it, I smile, I laugh. It's lighthearted. It's got a good message. It is a absolute wonderful movie. And although it wasn't very popular when it was released, it definitely got like a um, uh, a backing and a popularity. After it was released, right? right. It had like this cult following. Um, and boy, would I like to see them do another one? Yeah, I, I think it would be because there was there were talks, there were talks there were. Of doing another one, right? Because I think you just saw the documentary that I saw a few months ago. Yeah, the, the documentary um on uh, is on Amazon. It's called uh I think it's Never Surrender. It's not I thought it was Never Give Up, Never Surrender, but it's Never Surrender. Um and the thing is, is that, and, you know, sadly, they were, you know, when they made that documentary, they were in talks to start yes. on a sequel and the great Alan Rickman passed away. And obviously he's kind yeah. of instrumental and right. you could easily re recast, but, you know, nobody's heart was in it. After. No, you, you can't, you, you can't, it, it is, it would be very, very hard to, to, to redo that character. And if there was, cause there was a question in my mind, whether you saw the same documentary as I did. Now I know that you saw the same documentary, right? Because they did talk about, you know, the potential of a new movie, but when he passed away, it just kind of fell apart because you need that character. Well, and, and originally, uh, which I didn't re remember at the time, but originally that movie was to be directed by Harold Ramis. And it was going to be more of a, of a sat, more of a pure comedy, right? In the same vein as Spaceballs, where it's just a you know complete parody. Yeah, and um, when and a little, and that, a little bit, and a little bit more edgy too. Probably. Right? Well, well, when they well, here's the thing that I didn't notice until they pointed it out on the documentary. You're going to talk about her shirt, aren't you? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I will. She had prosthetic boobs, and Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> would say that, uh, as soon as they were off camera, she would rip them out and throw them at somebody, but she wouldn't take the wig off because she got to be a blonde, and she wanted to. She, she, she said, "I was trying to prove that uh, whether or not blondes actually did have more fun." <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway. When they originally filmed the entire movie, it was rated. It was going to be a hard PG. Yep. And there were actually curse words in it. Yes, there were. There were a couple f bombs. Yep. And and the studio said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we want we want this to be a G movie so that everybody can watch it. And they went back through and Dolby Din or uh, you know did AOR work or whatever uh, to to cover up the curse words. And what's really funny is there's a scene in the in, towards the end of the movie where the captain is talking over the communicator with the the nerds at home on the computer, getting instructions on how to get to the thing to turn the device off. And there's a scene where there's these chompers 
that keep coming down and they come around the corner and Sigourney Weaver goes, fuck no. Fuck, fuck that or fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, they, and they changed it. But her, you can definitely, if you're watching it, see her mouth and you're like, she just dropped an F. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, another another fun thing about that movie too, if you, if you watch the movie, uh, Sigourney's uh, shirt is all the way zipped up and then all of a sudden in the scene, her shirt is unzipped. And you never, if you watch the movie, there's never expl any explanation as to how her shirt gets unzipped, right? But in the this one of the scenes that they took out of the movie, you actually see she was trying to she's trying to win over an alien or something by showing her her boobs and her cleavage, and that was cut out of the movie. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, th there's another. Oh, speaking of continuity changes or errors in the film, um, the the scene where where the captain is fighting the rock monster and they transport him up at the end, he doesn't have a shirt on. And they transport him up, and suddenly he has the torn shirt that he had just taken or the had lost during the fight, and he's putting it back on because Tim Allen said, "I am not acting the rest of this movie without yeah. a shirt on." Yeah, yeah, shirt yeah, yeah, yeah. That says, "You know, put your shirt back on." So yep. yeah, he's like magically one of the one of the people on set threw him a t-shirt, and he's like, "I'm not doing that." Yeah, that, it's it's just such such a real, uh, just such a good movie. I, I strongly recommend that movie yeah. to anybody, especially especially in these times. I mean, I I think if you haven't seen that movie, even if you're not a sci-fi fan, uh, I think it'll put a smile on your face. It's and a good, movie. Your heart a it's a good yeah. movie. It's a yeah. really really good movie. Yeah, Bill, that's how the that's how Battlestar Galactica got around it. They yeah. said frack yeah. instead yeah. of fuck. Done this in the past where they make up a curse word so they can get around the censors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Frack is one of those ones. Uh, if you ever watched Farscape, which is another sci-fi show that was on, actually on the sci-fi channel, um, they used, they, they said Frell. Oh yeah. Frel, you know, they had, they had aliens, uh, curse words that, that they, they could squeeze in. Yeah, oh. of course, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. I, I even like the, uh, the theme song. To the, to that yeah, it's it, it was in the intro. It's in the intro. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, oh, what was her name? Uh, Wilma Deering. Oh God, she was hot. Oh my gosh, the 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 when she's walking around in her pilot suit back. I mean, they yeah, did. her tight white pants. Yeah, uh -huh. she's smoking hot. Um, yeah. yeah. When I said when I said Serenity before, the Serenity is the movie. I was actually yeah, talking about Fire 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 Fire. Yeah. the show. Yeah, um, and again, that's another. That's one of my shows. That's one of the things that uh, you know I liked it because I, I love westerns. And I love sci-fi, and there is no better melding of those two genres, except, I mean, obviously, if you're thinking about Westworld, but um, uh, spaceships and cowboys than Firefly. I mean, it is essentially, yeah, we've Earth people from Earth have spread out so far. We have all these different colonies now, and everybody's basically starting from scratch, and you have rural agrarian communities on planets and you have super high technical planets and everybody that you got the people that take stuff from one place to another. That's these guys. I mean, that's essentially what they, they were. Yeah. So let, let's do something and, and let's do something for the folks on the chat too. Um, because I, I, like, I'm going to say that I'm going to, this is the question that I'm going to ask, although there's, there's more than two, right? There's mm -hmm. definitely more than two, but I'm going to say to you, Patrick and to the people on the chat, what are the two most important or uh, yeah, most important sci-fi spaceships? Mm. There you go. I, I, I know which two. I know which two. Most important. Most uh, important. Most important, most uh, iconic. How about iconic? That's a good word. Let's see. Well, I mean, Obviously, the the Millennium Falcon. Yes, there you, you go. Know, that that would be one of mine. Most everybody's list because I mean it is, you know, Han Solo ship. It's the it's the it's the the Grail web uh, the Grail ship on, uh, you know, in that franchise that that, I mean, you think about it. I mean, Star Wars: A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, the three new movies. That ship is in all three movies. Yes. Or all six movies. Yes. Um, so that one would have to be number one. Okay. I, and I totally agree. 
I would, ha you know, obviously just the different iterations of the NCC uh, yes. the inter know, enterprise, whether that's the, the original uh, A, B, C, D, E, whatever. Right. Because, uh, you know, they no, no bloody A, no bloody B, no bloody C. But I, I would totally agree with you. I, I would say uh, the Enterprise and the Millennium Falcon. Now, uh, we could talk about others. We could talk about um, Jupiter 2. Uh, we could talk about the Galactica. We could talk about um, uh, the Eagle, the Eagle ships uh, from Space 1999. Uh, we could talk about the Discovery, which is also, uh, I think, a very important and iconic uh, spaceship. I mean, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, right? But I think the two uh, that are that probably most people would know and recognize would be the Millennium Falcon and the Enterprise. Now, since we're talking about the Enterprise, okay, what is your, Patrick, what is your favorite Enterprise? Visually? Yeah. My, the, the one that was, uh, I, I liked the look of the Enterprise in the final uh, Star Trek The Next Generation movie. I think that's uh, D. Really? Hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm completely different. Uh, for me, it would be the Rifa Enterprise as seen in the motion picture uh, or uh, the Enterprise A too, right? So okay. NCC 1701, right, was the original Enterprise. Then there was the NCC 1701 refit, mm -hmm. right? And then there's the NC 1701A, right? Now, oh, okay. you know, I, I do actually have another, another riff though on that. Uh, if you think about the TV series, the, the Next Generation TV series, um, the the episode, was it called the, the not the best of both worlds, because that's a Borg episode. Um, the End of All Things, is, is that what it's called? Where they were, it's the old Picard and they- All good things. All, yeah. Yeah. All good things. Yes. Um, the Enterprise that's in that one is pretty badass as well. The the future one with the third yeah. nacelle, the third yeah. nacelle on the top, yeah. Okay, well, shield integrity at three hundred percent. But um, I, and I think like so before we were talking about you know the difference between um, like a model and uh, um, you know a digitally created uh, ship. Th there was something about, and this was actually a scene in the motion picture that like critics did not like. And yet I find it to be one of the best scenes in the movie is when um, Scotty is taking Kirk from the space station to the Enterprise and the flyby that they do, you know, and it's really slow and it's kind of boring by today's standards. But boy, to me, that was sci-fi porn. Oh, that, yeah. That, that Enterprise was a beautiful, hot, naked lady. And they were just kind of driving all around her, right? I loved that scene. Loved yeah. that scene. Um, and they replicate that or attempt to replicate that feel in the the new series. The not what well, what do we call the 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 Abrams Star Trek shows or Star Trek movies? Uh, when they're riding the elevator in uh, Starbase and they finally get from the base where there's a wall and you know they're surrounded by uh, walls and stuff, and then the, the the elevator comes out, and then they're in that open uh, expanse of dry dock or space dock or whatever, and you can see the Enterprise for the first time. Yeah, um, those they're they're trying to replicate right, that. I, and I, I do. I think they they tried to replicate it, but in a, in a very very small way, and and a way that won't lose the the audience's attention. Where, where they may have with the motion picture, but the motion picture, the the original Star Trek, the motion picture w was a very very cerebral, slow, by today's standards, boring movie. It was. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it, I mean, if you think about when that movie came out, there had been no Star Trek for a very long time. Uh, the most popular Star Trek movies that are uh, star science fiction movies that had been out at the time tonally didn't didn't mat me you know nowhere did Star Wars the 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 motion picture and the Star Trek franchise tonally meet so they had to they had to look back at other sci-fi movies and if you think about it uh, 2001 had been out 
uh, you know, prior to that, but there, the sci, you know, the, the, the space opera had not really ever been described in a film. Right. Right. That happened. And then when Star Trek, the motion picture came out, it was like, okay, we don't have anything to look at. So we're going to do this. They, I mean, if you think about it, the way that movie is shot, it's more artful. The, the way that they're framing their shots is more, uh, big, big, big canvas. Uh, and you know, even the scene where Spock has to put on the space suit and fly through, I mean, all the different, the, the very psychedelic, yeah. uh, you know, very long psychedelic scene was birthed from 2001 when uh, the captain is flying over the obelisk in space. Yes. I mean, visually, they are crazily similar. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And, and you know, um, Star Trek The Motion Picture wasn't supposed to be Star Trek The Motion Picture. It was supposed to be Star Trek The TV Series. But right. when Star Wars came out, they sh- changed gears and they said, okay, well, we got to do a movie too. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Star- Bill Tarling is upset uh, that I did not include uh, Shatner's tech war on the bottom of the page. Um, I couldn't find any good quality images of Greg Evigan from that show. Um, I actually remember that show quite well. Um, But yeah, there was no really good pictures uh, because I I have space. I can add more. (laughs) Yeah, I was I was looking at I was looking down below there. And it's funny because there's another movie on there that I I was actually watching last night. By the way, this is what I tend to do at night. Uh, after I've I've like surfed YouTube to the point where I really should do to, to the point it's way too late. Um, I, I will put a old sci-fi movie on and it'll just repeat all night long, right? And that's how I go to bed. Okay, so last night I went to bed to Logan's Run, and I see Logan's Run down there. Um, boy, I mean that that's like another really interesting movie with an interesting soundtrack, like crazy stuff going on. But there is one thing in Logan's Run that I wish was real. I wish was real where you have like the, the closet in your house where you push a button and you know <laughs> the girl who wants to have sex just shows up and you just go have sex with her. Yeah. I mean, why can't we have that? Like, why, why can't we have that nowadays? I, you know, modern technology folks, come on, let's get with it. That would be great. I think yeah. that would be great. You, I mean, that, that is a really, I mean, we, I mean, it's, it's a futuristic version of Pornhub. I mean, you know, yeah. The, Michael is sitting in his apartment and he turns the screen on and uh, different, different women just sort of scroll yeah. through. It's like swiping right, swiping left, and right. then you find the one you want, and you say that one, and the door opens, and it's her. Right. And and, and by the way, the, like if you, if, you, if you remember the movie, the first one that showed up was a guy, yeah. right? Um, so it'll work for Dimitri, too. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, John Van, Van Ness in the, in, in the chat, he says, uh, you know, I have really good sci-fi for you, Altered Carbon on Netflix. Um, yeah, let's not forget um, there are there are still good sci-fi shows. Um, obviously, that one is very much a dystopian, dark future. Um, but there are there's amazing uh, opportunities to get sci-fi. My favorite program that's a current TV show, or uh, uh, well, yeah, it's a current show. Uh, is called The Expanse. Oh, are you watching that? I have watched. Every episode of that. Is yeah. it good? Is it worth my time? Because I'll, I'll be honest with you. I watched the first episode and I'm just trying to get hooked. I'm trying like, it's got, it's not grabbing my attention. So Should I keep watching it? Tell me. I read all the books. Now I, I read constantly. I'm a constant reader, but um, to of the shows that are currently available to watch without having to, to, to go the extra mile and pay for something, um, the Expanse, because the first two seasons of The Expanse were on Sci-Fi, were on the Sci-Fi Channel, and um, the whole idea. Now, this is a very much if you read right Robert Heinlein, you read a lot of like old school site science fiction. This is the the beginning of humans' exploration into the you know just the the, the their own solar system, our own solar system. So. Uh, it is definitely worth a watch. Now, it is not, like I said, it, it, it's not going to, they're not, they don't have warp speed. I mean, this is, uh, it's, and it's a very dense 
story because there's a lot of politics going on. There's a lot of things. There's there's more than one story concurrently being told, and they all sort of blend together. Um, if you if you can tolerate Game of Thrones, yeah, I did, and I I was I loved Game of Thrones. Uh, then yes, I definitely, 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 definitely watch it. Now the third season is on uh, Amazon, but I think they're all on Amazon now. You can just go Amazon Prime and watch them all. Um, but the thing is, the other thing is, is they they brought in the best people that they could find to explain to them the real science and physics. So uh, after season two ended, before season three got picked up by Amazon, uh, the Expanse writers and actors and stuff got taken into uh, this like National Science Foundation uh, yearly gathering, and they were praising the show for actually doing the, the physics properly of how this would work. And uh, that's when Jeff Bezos, because he was there, that's when he told everybody, "We Amazon's going to buy the Expanse and keep making the show. Okay. Um, but yeah, it is. Ve- it, it, yeah. So, so David said, yeah, it's difficult to get into, but worth it. Uh, John says it's worth it. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give it another shot. But you, you said something there. You said it's dense. Yes. It's dense. Okay. You know what I'm watching that is also dense? Westworld. Yes, okay. that's, a, that's a very, very, very dense plot. I he, uh, I have to watch an episode of Westworld. Then I have to go on YouTube to have somebody explain to me what the fuck I just watched because I have no idea. It's not that bad. I mean, The Expanse is not that bad. Okay, but, but like Westworld, oh my God. You know, and I think maybe, I think maybe this is why I appreciated old star trek or why i appreciate the orville right because i don't have to remember what happened three fucking years ago to watch this episode right now right and and that's how i feel like with westworld i can't remember what i had for breakfast yesterday and you want me to you want me to remember something that i saw three four years ago it's insane it's insane that's why like literally after i watch the show i have to go to youtube and watch guys Explain to me everything that I just saw because I can't figure it out on my own. Okay, I'm so still, I'm still hooked. I, I can't stop watching it. I don't know why. So I, I, I I'll I'll posit this to you: your top five favorite sci-fi shows to binge watch. Um, TV shows? Yeah, shows. Okay, Star Trek, the original Star Trek, the original series. Um, that that is like. When I have that on the TV, it's just like having friends talking in the background, if that makes any sense, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I just grew up with with uh, Star Trek. So Star Trek would definitely be one of them. Um, if you want something campy and fun and just goofy, uh, Lost in Space, right? Um, if you haven't seen it or, or if you have seen it and really want to get into something again, the new Battlestar Galactica, I, I would definitely recommend that. Um, and then like a couple newer things, I would have to say the Mandalorian. Uh, I think that's some really, really good star Wars. Uh, and then believe it or not, Picard. Okay. Now there's a lot of stuff that I didn't like about Picard and and Bill, I'm not going to say the lost in space on Netflix. That show is a fucking turd. Um, (laughs) I'm, there's a lot of stuff that I liked about Picard and there's a lot of stuff that I didn't like about Picard. Like all the F bombs, some of the some of the social justice warrior stuff that they just they got to they got to cram it down your throat everywhere you look today, you know. So there's some of that, but I, I thought the story was good. I liked um seeing characters that that were close to our hearts or dear to our hearts come back and make appearances. I thought that was fantastic. Um, and, and I did like the fact that even though it wasn't, we'll call it episodic, even though like every episode didn't stand on its own, at least, at least with Picard, okay, they got the whole thing done in a season. They finished the storyline in the season, right? And I, I like that. I like that. So I don't have to remember what happened four years ago. Right, I can just watch the season 
and get the whole idea. And yeah. and I hope it does come back. I hope it does come back. It's just like, he's just I, I feel like he's frail now. He's just not the Picard. Well, he's not the Picard of the past. He's he's older, right? But like even his even his vocals, his voice, just not as powerful as as Picard in the next generation was, if that makes any sense. Well, he's lost some timber, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I my list is slightly different. I mean okay. I I really enjoyed the I mean, I'm gonna put the remake of Battlestar Galactica as the top of my list. Okay. Um I really love that show. Uh the second show is also see I liked I liked both of these first two just because they they knew that they had a a five year plan, or in the case of Battlestar Galactica, a four year plan. Babylon five was designed specifically to tell a story, a beginning, a middle, and the end, and you can watch it. And once you're done, you feel okay. The story has completed. There's there's uh you know, it's like a book being closed. Uh, Babylon uh, Firefly would be on that list, other than other than the fact that they ended it. Um, and that wasn't their fault. That was the studio The Fox didn't want to play it anymore. Um, I would put that in the top five, maybe not number three. Um, and then I grew up watching, uh, the next generation. That was my, my age group. That was my generation. Um, so I have to put that one before the original series, which there will be people trying to reach through the, 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 computer and strangle me for the same <laughs> but yeah i mean the next generation was was my was my age group sure. and oh, actually, actually uh there's a show that uh i i'm, I'm probably the on, one of the only people in the world that uh, that that may remember it but there was a a, a show called sapphire and steel that was a, a british tv show they were uh essentially like uh the protectors of the timeline and they traveled through through you know time to fix errors in the timeline and um uh, david mccallum was one of the actors and um the lady uh lumley i think is her name was the was the was the female lead on that show and it you know it it didn't last very long and it was before my time but i've you know, watched it later on. Um, and then honorable mention for Doctor Who, just because it's been on for... Ah, oh, see, yeah. never been a Doctor Who fan. Never been a Doctor Who fan. You, you know, I, I, if, if, I, if I were to rethink my list, I, would, I would, might even add Firefly in there. You know, because I said, oh, at the beginning of the show, I said I binge-watched um, uh, Serenity, but Serenity was the movie, right? I right. actually binge-watched uh, Firefly, and I found it uh, very engaging. Really, really engaging, really enjoyable. So, uh, yeah, I would definitely uh, add that. Uh, and I, I just want to talk to, to Bill Tarling, something Bill Tarling said here, uh, that the best Lost in Space episode is the Great Vegetable um, uh, Rebellion. Now, that's the the craziest, most campiest, most ridiculous um, Lost in Space episode. But in my opinion, in my opinion, the best Lost of Space episode, Lost in Space episode, and unfortunately, it's a black and white one because when it started season one, uh, it was black and white. Yeah. Uh, would be War of the Robots, War of the Robots, because first of all, it has one of my favorite lines ever in a, in, in a TV show, but also because it has two of my favorite robots together, like in one scene, talking to each other, uh, which would be the B nine, okay, um, and Robbie the robot, right? So. Yeah. It, Aren't they side by side on my on my little picture there? Yeah, they are, but but they're, they're on a TV show. They're uh, on, in a TV show together. They, he was just on. He was just on my my screen in the background. Uh, of course, Robbie the robot uh, made popular really in in Forbidden Planet, but he was uh, in in Lost in Space. And one of my one of my favorite lines in that in that TV show was. You are even more stupid than I first calculated, or something like that, right? <laughs> it was just, just fantastic, and and you know, just to see those two robots on the screen battling each other, you know, with with like how slow they move and like their terrible weapons and everything. But it's just, I I I, I think that's one of the best episodes. So okay, this is a this is uh this is a question. What is your favorite single episode of any? 
TV show, like the, or story arc from any TV show. Oh my god! Because I have a favorite episode, like, and I like and favorite I episode of any of these shows, like the one story that 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 you know that you might rewatch over and over again, or that 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 just grab grabs you. All right. Um, just just thinking right off the top of my head, one thing I notice when it comes to Star Trek, okay, I will go back and watch, rewatch in in all the series in Enterprise, in Voyager, in the Next Generation, uh, Borg episodes. I okay. love, so I, love I love the Borg. So best of both worlds would probably be one of my favorites. Or I Borg. Yeah, I Borg, but I, but I think best of both worlds, and it's a two part. It's a two parter, you know. But um, I think that was some really really good Trek. So yeah, my favorite is also an episode of the Next Generation. Um, now this is weird. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'll explain. Um, my favorite 007 is George Lazenby, and it's not because uh, he's better than any of the other ones, but the one movie that he was in, Her Majesty's Secret Service shows 007 as a human being like in that movie he he he's he makes mistakes he's not perfect the gadgets don't tell the story and at the end when his wife gets killed he actually sheds a tear he cries uh my favorite star trek episode is or my favorite like i i actually bought this one episode just <clears throat> to watch it over and over again is the inner light Oh, that's the flute episode, isn't it? Yes. Yes. That's and he shows Picard as a human being. He lives an entire life with a family, uh, you know, as it, 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 and it just shows like he's the hero that we all like look up to, but he's also just a regular guy. He's a hero in that, or he's just a, yeah, he's not, it's not about saving the universe. It's just about his family. And, <laughs> That was a that was a really interesting episode, and that that's that's quoted as it's well known as one of the best next generation episodes out there. And think about that. So you know he he gets like he gets attacked by a satellite or something, and he goes down. Uh, and and as he's down, right, he's on a different planet with like a different family, and he doesn't know anything about these people. He knows that he's a starship captain. Uh, and then he's, he like, he, maybe I'm not a starship captain. And, and like, he lives, he lives, like Patrick said, he lives an entire lifetime. So he sees his kids grow up and his, his kids have kids. And, and, you know, he sees the people who around him like die and, and he gets older and then he dies an entire lifetime. Right. And then instantly, he, like he wakes up and he's back on the enterprise. Even like, that's pretty incredible. That, yeah, that, I mean, like, the idea behind that episode is really good. Uh, and, and there's another episode of The Next Generation, which is really, really impressive, too. And and I, I don't know the name of the episode, but let me ask you this. How many lights are there? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's the, uh, the uh, I don't remember the name of that one either, but the Cardassians are interrogating him. Yeah, uh, There's an episode of Babylon 5 that is very much the same episode they the the captain of babylon 5 gets captured because they've rebelled against the alliance government or whatever and they're trying to brainwash him and it's very much the same like psychological uh we're trying to break you down so that we can reprogram you and you know yeah that is a that is a great uh, a great theme but it's also you know David, Dave, when David uh, writes uh, Darmok, are you talking about Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra or some shit like that? Right? I, I think I got it right. I think I got it right. Yeah. Right. That, that was another. That was another really good episode too. And there was, oh my god, there was uh, somebody on YouTube quoted that line, and it really, really made me laugh. Um, all right. So what about what about sci-fi movies? Like, what sci-fi movies can you watch over and over and over again? And and what do you recommend? Right, because I think for me it's older sci-fi movies. But what do you think? Um, well, it's it'll be a mixed bag, probably. Um, I like uh, there. Well, you'll never find this movie. Um, 
and, and this may this may not even make the list, but it's an amazing movie. It's um, it's two characters on there's it's only two characters in the entire movie, uh, and it takes place all in an office. It, it looks like a psychiatrist office, and um, it's called Final Approach. And uh, Hector J. Alonzo plays this psycholo psychologist, and one of the guys that played on um, Hill Street Blues is the other character and i can't remember his name and it's all uh about this test pilot and he, he thinks that he that he's been captured and they're trying to ask him questions about like top secret stuff and at the end you realize this guy's dead and the guy that's been talking to the to him the whole time is god oh, really? sci-fi uh it's it's an amazing movie oh that's uh, okay hold on i'm taking that note too yeah, so, Final Approach. And there's there's a whole series of Final Approach movies but that have nothing to do with this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you, you should be able to find it. I mean, Blade Runner is going to always be in my list. Uh, it might move up and down a little bit, but it will always be in my list. Uh, I love that movie. I have watched it probably 10,000 times. Um, it embodies all the bad stuff I've been saying about dystopias. <laughs> but... It is, uh, I mean, it's probably the first of the like epic dystopian future films. Um, Blade Runner would be on the list. Uh, you already mentioned Logan's Run, so I'm not going to mention Logan's Run because that's also one of my go to films. Um, uh, well, 2001, which is a very dense film. Um, yeah, I actually like 2010 too. Yeah, I have both of them. Yeah, um, Roy Scheider. Played. Roy Scheider. I, he was he was good in that. <laughs> he was good in that. It, he he was awesome in Jaws. He's got to be awesome in. Got to be awesome, right? Absolutely. Um, wow, that's what three. Um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying this movie, but uh, have you have you watched the movie Wing Commander? No. So there 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 used to be a series of video games, um, back you know. 25 years ago called wing commander and they made a movie and uh it's awful it's it's seriously awful movie but yeah you should definitely watch that um <laughs> i'm just scrolling through the 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 collection of movies in my head yeah um, actually you know just for like popcorn enjoyment like independence day has to be in there somewhere the first Independence Day. Yeah, there's a whole there's a whole line of movies like that, like Independence Day, or you could even say, uh, oh my God, what Bumblebee? What the hell movies? Oh, Transformer movies? Yeah, the Transformer movies and everything. And you just want to just like not think about anything and just watch explosions. <laughs> yeah, right. Really right. cool, like robots turning into cars, turning into robots. Yeah, I mean, but uh, the trans oh the Terminator, the original Terminator movie, the original Terminator. Yes, the original Terminator movie. Right. And you could kind of go back, like if you're thinking about the originals, like the original Alien had yeah, no, no. such a different vibe. And I actually have a tab for remake versus original. So, oh, know, good. Okay. Can okay. Do that one. We'll get um, there. Oh, one more. Um, the Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. Which one? John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, John Carpenter's. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I I have a few. I'm just just a couple here, right? Uh, we talked about a Galaxy Quest. Like I can watch that movie over and over and over again. Okay, here's an interesting one: The Black Hole. Oh, I love that movie by Disney. It, it, it's, it's it's the most un Disney Disney movie you will ever see outside of maybe Vincent. Okay, there it's 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 dark. It's weird. It's um, there's robots and spaceships and black holes. It's like everything that I like, uh, you know, about about a movie it is in there. Uh, the black holes is something I could watch over and over again. Uh, Stargate. I really liked oh, Stargate. Original Stargate movie. Yeah, the original was... Stargate movie. I never watched any of the TV series, right? But I liked the original uh, Stargate movie. And then here's a weird one. Okay, the remake of Tron. Oh, that was an awful. I loved the remake of Tron. I loved it from a visual aspect. I loved it from a storyline. And hey, Daft Punk did the uh, the soundtrack. So how can you go wrong there, right? Uh, I, I really like that. Predator, um, there you go. That's another good one. Yeah. Uh, 
Come on, you didn't, John. You didn't really say Waterworld, did you? <laughs> it, well, he named. He named. Here's the thing, though. I will argue. I will go to the mat for the for the for the movie Dune. He put Waterworld and Dune, which yeah. are two of the most biggest historic flops in movie <laughs> history, let alone sci-fi movie history. It really but were. I go to the mat for Dune. Um, it's my favorite book. Uh, I've read that book probably more than forty or fifty times. Um, Luckily, Denis Villeneuve is making a uh, – they're redoing Dune as a – the first two – the first book will be two movies. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, – I'm looking forward to that. But mm -hmm. I still enjoy watch. I have the director's cut of Dune on Blu-ray, and it's like four and a half hours long. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I will watch that movie. Um yeah, so, another fun another fun movie is um, Mars Attacks. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, me 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 me. I love those guys. Yeah, um, yeah, and you know Jack Nicholson playing the president of the United States is just hilarious. I mean, it's mm -hmm. almost like the president we have now, but I'm not going to get into that. So okay, let's go into the remake versus the original or or the original. Okay. Okay, so uh, there's quite a lot of movies that have been remade i mean uh the thing that i mentioned is a remake of uh a movie uh, was it thing from another world um which is also a very great classic sci-fi movie um then um th they actually remade the john carpenter's thing or they didn't remake it they sequelized it or prequelized it uh Dune has been remade. They did it as a mini series. Uh, there's, there's a lot of them. Well, uh, so, you know, when you say there, I, there's a difference between a remake and just another movie in the series, right? right? So, like Alien, right? Alien is the original movie, and then Aliens right. and everything that came after it were you can't call those remakes. They're more in the series. Those are sequels, those sequels are right? So I, I think in, in some cases, you know, the originals are better than the remakes. Um, just to give you an example, RoboCop, right? The new RoboCop, I thought terrible. The original RoboCop, hey, it's a classic. How, how can you go wrong? Um, the Day the Earth Stood Still. Oh, that, that remake was awful. Awful, right? Awful. Terrible. And, and I'm sure there's, there's plenty more, and, and I'll, I'll think about more as we go. You know, but sometimes, like John Carpenter, uh, the the remake is better. Oh yeah, no, I mean, I I actually, even though the thing from another world and the thing, one is a remake of the other, but they're not. Right. They don't they don't tell the same exact story. The thing. The John Carpenter movie is more closely related to the original source material, the short story that that it was based on, than the the thing from another world it was. Um, oh, I thought of I thought of another one, Total Recall. Oh, that was awful. Awful, right? The remake, terrible. Oh, but again, <laughs> neither one of them relate closely to the original source material. Uh, we get three breasted Martian babe in the. In the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger version, you, you know you, you can't you can't redo that. You know, no, you can't. Um, yeah, it, you just can't do that. Uh, yeah, and you know, there's 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 a lot of them that are really bad. I mean, the Planet of the Apes. Somebody mentioned uh, Bill mentioned it actually. Here, I'll put it I'll put it down there. Um, Planet of the Apes, Charlton Heston, Roddy McDowell. I mean. An amazing feat for the time. Okay. Uh, then, then Mark Wahlberg comes and does a remake, and it's awful. And then the remakes, the most, the three modern remakes are better. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and by the way, we 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 can't forget that um, <clears throat> Planet of the Apes, the end of that movie, one of the greatest endings in yeah. movie history. Yeah. Right. I mean, Charlton Heston standing on the beach, uh, looking at the 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 destruction of the you know Statue of Liberty in the background or in the you know in in on the horizon. Yeah, you it, it's it, you never nobody at the time would have expected that. Yeah, you know sometimes I, I I almost feel like 
there shouldn't be remakes, right? That that I, that the originals should be left alone and and don't. Oh God, I heard I heard that they were remaking Scarface. Okay, yeah. um, and is that is that something that we really want to remake or just call it something different? I don't know um, because just the classic is, is classic. It's so good, right? It's so good. Is that something we really need to remake? It's still considered one of the greatest movies ever made. It's like, it's like if somebody said, uh, well, we're going to, we're going to get, uh, Mario Puzo's Godfather and we're going to remake the Godfather book into a movie series. Oh, you mean there's already, uh, an amazing classic, Francis Ford Coppola series right. of movies based on this. Oh, well, yeah, we're going to remake that anyway. Uh, right. I mean, why would you, when, when you right. have perfection, why, why would you, cause you can't, you can't, you can't achieve the same thing. I mean, right. Right. Like you don't, you don't re- remake the Sistine Chapel. You don't remake the, uh, the Mona Lisa, right. You, that's not something you do. You don't, you don't touch art. And, and in my, in my opinion, some of these films are art and they, they shouldn't be remade. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to, uh, I don't want to get too, too deep into the, uh, you know, um, Francis, not Francis Ford Coppola, uh, uh, Marty Scorsese recently criticized, uh, the Marvel action superhero movies because they weren't cinema. Yeah. They're not real movie, right? They're not, they're not cinema. Those are, you know, you, I mean, obviously they're, when you're, when you're talking about art, you know, and, and, and entertainment, you can't really criticize, say one is better than the other. You know, I don't know what art is until I see it. You, you, I'll know it when I see it sort of thing. Oh, by the way, Mark, Mark got a good one. The, uh, the remake of Ghostbusters. Oh yeah. That was awful. Boy, that was terrible. That was, that was bad. You know what? I didn't even care that it was three women instead of three guys. I, but it just wasn't good. I well, mean, it, it just wasn't good. It was bad. What's really sad is they, they went and made that movie, and now they're making a Ghostbusters 3 with the original people. Yes, and th- this movie, as far as this movie is concerned, doesn't exist. Yeah. The, the, in, the, in, the, in, they, in, in Ghost of War, they're just erasing it, like which they should do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I think a lot of these, these – if they wanted to spend money on, on something that they've already made, uh, Lucas did it. Uh, I think it at the time it probably didn't work out as well as he wanted it to when he brought back the original trilogy to the movie theaters and remade all the remastered all the special effects. You know, if you want to take an old movie and make it better, try it. Instead of making a whole new movie, take the original awesome movie, clean it up a little bit, and bring it back out. I'd love, I'd go to the movie theater. We have an Alamo draft house here. Where you can, uh, they, you know, they, they have a series. They'll bring out like old movies that 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 have a haven't been out for a while, and um, bring it back out. They'll they'll go through the process of fixing the print so that it's as as uh, you know restored as possible, and they'll they'll play it. You know, do that. Yeah, um, John, like John that. asked multiple times about Inception. So Inception uh, is a is an excellent film um and you know it it i i don't classify that in the same vein as a lot of the sci i mean it is it is science fiction because it it takes place in the dream world but yeah i don't i don't categorize nolan's films in the same in the same categories as a lot of these movies that's right. more of the art vein Right, a little bit, little bit different there. I, I agree with you, but Inception was a great movie. Oh, um, yeah. you, we were talking about like sequels and stuff. Um, so we talked about Alien. Yeah. Now, Aliens was not bad, uh, and and it was, but it was a different kind of movie. I remember because I, I think I was too young to go see Alien when Alien first came out, and I would imagine you were too, right? I'm younger. Um, than you a bit, yeah. But- but I remember because my, my grandmother had a house on a lake and it was the summer. And I think it was a summer release. And I remember all the adults going to see Alien. And I remember it s- s- terrifying them because like, it was it was a good sci-fi, but it was like horror sci-fi. Mm-hmm. It was dark and gritty sci-fi. 
Um, and I think from from a horror perspective, I think Alien is just one of the best movies out there. Would you agree? Oh yeah, no. I mean, it's it, it. Now here's the thing, though. You have Alien, which is directed by Ridley Scott, mm-hmm. who also directed Blade Runner, which mm-hmm. is awesome one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and then they bring in John Carpenter, not John Carpenter, uh, uh, the Terminator guy. One of the, one of the most James Cameron, yeah, they James. Bring James Cameron, who is at the time known for sci-fi and action to direct the second film. Um, there's a distinct tone. I mean, just we tone, difference between the way that that movie was 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 crafted between the two people um so yeah i mean they're completely different angles one is yeah. one is the original was to attract the sci-fi horror people the second one is more let's make this movie for everyone that's more right. approachable for everyone let's put a big uh, bunch of explosions in it we you know zooming spaceships uh marines um you know, I, I almost draw a parallel between Alien and Alien 2 or Alien and Aliens and Terminator and Terminator 2, right? Yeah. I think both good movies, but different kind, different kind of movie. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the original Terminator, again, uh, dark, scary, different. I'll, I'll never forget when, you know, he, she, they're running away, and this is when he doesn't have any skin. He's just an exoskeleton. Uh, and he's coming after her in that stop, terrible stop motion that they did, but coming after her down that 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 uh, that hallway, and she like closes the door right before he gets there. That like that was that was good to me. That was good good film, good cinema. Yeah, that's. I mean, um, and you know, Cameron for Terminator Two developed so much technolo- technology. Technology. Uh, see, the thing about him, uh, that you know, Avatar, for example. He had he had to wait for the special effects and the computer and all that stuff to catch up to him so that he could make Avatar. Because yeah. the you know the original like the morphine technology uh, that they used to have uh, the the T two thousand or whatever it is the the the, the, the li- liquid metal Terminator to be able to be done first is like you know amazing. But at the time, that was like a leap forward in, in special effects and the first time anything like that had ever been attempted. You know, I think there's also there's a lot of a lot of overuse of technology oh, and yeah. special effects. Like like what I just think like three that came to mind, right? Uh Terminator, but the most recent Terminator. I mean, like just, it was just too too much. Like it's it's it, we know it's science fiction, but we want it to be like believable science fiction. Right. Does that make any sense? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like Transformers, like with the, with like like the little pixels that were like flying around to create these robots. Come on. Um, and here's th- this is this is a big one, I think. Um, and it was just like, oh my god, what did I just see? Like, I don't understand what I just saw. Aquaman. Did you see Aquaman? Like, was there like way too much shit going on in the movie Aquaman, or is it just me? Well, I mean, that movie, half the movie, they're underwater and they're talking and acting like they're not underwater. It's just kind of weird at the beginning. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, um, the the best, like I said a while ago, I I, I really uh, I really connected with Rogue One um, more so than a lot of the other movies that have come out in that jump in that franchise recently, but. The, the reason I really dug it was because they they went to painstaking efforts to rely on practical effects as much as possible. And they went out of their way to make the, you know, for example, Star Trek. Let's talk about Star Trek. The the J.J. Uh, Abrams Star Trek okay. did not uh, try in any way, shape or form to to hold on to the visual of the original Star Trek series, even though that's the same characters, supposed to be the same ship, the screens on the on on the bridge were completely up to date and modern. But in Rogue One, they went back to the 1970s computer screens 
they made everything monotone on screen like they did in the original series. So when when the the pixelated Death Star comes across, and you know, it's still the same. Yeah, it's this. It, they did. They went and made sure. Hey, we want this to visually match up. Yeah. Well, I, I think you see you see that a lot in the in in the Star Wars franchise because they know that they're they're in the same galaxy. They're in the same time frame. Things have to look the same. Like when you when you're at the. Um, uh, when you're at the gun station of the Millennium Falcon, you know exactly what that screen is supposed to look like, right? When you angle the deflector shields and all that shit, it can't look different because if it looks different, the, the movie loses something, right? And, and and I think you're right. Like the the new Star Trek, again, it just didn't look, it didn't feel like Star Trek. And and holy shit, I mean, could you have used lens flare anymore in that goddamn movie? I mean, seriously. That's a J.J. Abrams thing. Oh, he my God. Flare. Oh my God! There, there's a great move, Bill Tarley. We we didn't talk about that. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. What yeah. a great movie! Richard Dreyfuss making like mashed potato like uh, facsimiles of the Devil's Devil Tower. Yeah, that, that that was amazing. Um, you know, uh, that was a hopeful movie. You know, it was. It was. It was at the end of the movie. The the aliens come down, and all the little all the people come out, and the aliens come up and and hold hands with Richard Dreyfuss, and you're like, this is, you know, this is great. This is awesome. They're not trying to eat his brains or anything. They're not trying to, you know, destroy all of our major cities and and kill all the people. It's like you know, okay, this is this is fine. Yeah, definitely, definitely a fun movie. Definitely a, a one to 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 watch if you haven't seen it. Uh, that that that's a good call. Good call there, Bill Tarling. All right, question to you. All right, um, the most important robots in sci-fi. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the most important robots in sci-fi. Well, like I, I didn't limit it. I, I limited it to, to two ships. Let's say let's say the five most important robots in sci-fi, and I'll 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 work on my list as you as you're. Okay, so I mean. Obviously, R two D two, because if it wasn't for R two D two, the 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 plans for the Death Star would never have gotten to General Kenobi. Um, he's obviously very important. Um, well, uh, Gort, Gort is kind of important. Uh, you know, uh, he's he's on the screen beside Doctor Sp or Mister Spock. He's kind of important. Um, I, I just sort of have a soft place in my heart for Twiggy. Okay, Twiggy's good. Twiggy's awesome. Um, you know, uh, did you ever watch AI? With uh, the kid? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's not on the list, but I just thought of that one. Um, okay. Yeah, Data is the heart of star Trek. Yeah. Well, data, you can argue, you can argue Android versus robot, but I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> artificial, artificial being. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I, I want to say Bender just for comic, uh, value because most <laughs> people will just get a chuckle out of that. Um, let's see one more, uh, robot. Well, <laughs> No, I was. Uh, I'm not going to bring Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy into this. Uh, shit. All right, you think, I, and and, and I I'll, go through, I'll go through my list because my list is very similar. Okay. Okay. So you keep thinking. I, I have to add the B nine. Uh, I mean, the Lost in Space robot. I think is, is very important, right? And then. Because one of the the first robots ever in a in in a uh, you know a film, uh, I got to I got to go with Robbie the robot. I, I think he's he's up there. R two D two and C three P O. It's Abbott and Costello. I mean, yeah. they they have been in every single one of the Star Trek Star Wars movies. Excuse me. Um, and now here's an interesting one, and you can argue that this is not a robot, but I allowed an android, so you could maybe allow this. Hal nine thousand. Yeah. Right. Hal, Hal is very important, right? So that 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 would be my list. Yeah, uh, that, that's you know that's because every one of these stories, you know, whether you okay, so you know, for example, I could throw in um, the Cylons from both uh, Battlestar Galactica and the remake. 
Oh, we could talk all day long about robots, and that's okay. That's good because like they're robots. integral. I mean, they're they're center to the story. Um, and I do love uh, Marvin, uh, the paranoid android, Bill. And I actually did say Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I just um, most people wouldn't know who that was. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would say the sideline just because if it wasn't they they are the antagonist of both of those series is, um, I mean, you could throw in the Cybermen if you were watching Doctor Who, uh, the Daleks, uh, because again, those are, uh, well, I mean, the Daleks are like Doctor Who's like major, like nemesis. Uh, they're a reoccurring, uh, you know, opponent for him throughout the entire history of that show. So any of those, I mean, I don't want to say evil robot empires, all of the all of them in one category, but yeah, I mean those those guys are kind of very integral to all the different plots that they're in. So yeah, I just I just looked up uh, on the side here uh, most important sci fi robots, and it's, it's interesting some of the stuff that came up. Uh, the the robot from Metroid. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, Kit, interesting. Kit Knight Rider. Knight Rider. Okay. Op Optimus Prime. Uh, Bishop from Aliens. Oh yeah, didn't mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, those are some of the more interesting. Oh, Bicentennial Man. Did you ever oh, see that movie? movie? Robin Williams playing. Yeah, was a, that's a really good yeah. movie. That's a. It's almost a. Um, you get a little teary eyed at the little end. Little teary eyed, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Good. Not, if you haven't seen that movie, see that. Especially if you like robots and stuff like that. Watch Bicentennial Man with Robin Williams. Very very good movie. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the whole the whole premise: a robot that wants to be a man. Mm -hmm. You know, an, an immortal uh, thing. You know, I don't want to say a being, but yeah, an immortal thing deciding that I don't want to be immortal and I want to be a human and I want to die. Yep. Yeah. Uh, here, here, here's another one on the list: Wally. Wally. Yeah. The Terminator. And of course, R two D two. And you know what's funny is, as much as I like R two D two, that's how much I don't like BB eight. <laughs> yeah, is that wrong? I, I, I don't know. I do like I do like the robot in in Rogue War that or Rogue One though. W which one is that? I don't oh, know. The, the the oh the, the I, I know which one you're talking about. Alan okay. Alan Toydick played the voice, but I don't. Yes, know. yeah, the comic relief uh, robot. Yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he's on the top five important robots list. No, but but definitely a good one and a funny one too. See, like Paul's mad. Daleks are not robots. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's true, technically. Yes. Um. Yeah, I mean, you could. We could talk about robots for a long time. There's, there's, uh, throughout the sci-fi film and TV show, uh. Johnny Five, yeah. Oh, uh, Johnny Five. Oh my God, who's Johnny? Who's Bill, Johnny? Bill, yeah. Bill even put that in there. Uh, Johnny Five or number five alive. Yeah, that's Johnny Five. Yep, Johnny um, Five is alive. Was it Ali Sheedy? Was in that movie, right? Yeah, that was a great movie. Did I call it? Um. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many great artificial people, um, in movies. <laughs> They really are. They really are. Well, and, and, is that are very artificial too. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We did that. Oh well, let's let's. Okay, let's do your top five favorite sci-fi films. Top five favorite sci-fi. Well, I already. I think I, w I went I through some of them already. So let, let's see. We got to let's recap. Um, so the black hole is one. Yeah. Uh, Stargate is another. Yeah. Tron, the new Tron. Oh, we, one, did we did right? talk about these. Yeah. Um, Galaxy Quest is one. And then I'm like, I'm like missing one. Uh, and, and there's so many. There's so many that I can go and I could watch again. Um, how about this? How about this question? Like in the in the Star Trek and Star Wars franchises, um, what are your favorite films there? What, what what movies do you like the most in those two franchises? We can okay. start with so Star Wars. Favorite Star Trek film? Sure, Just let's talk about. You could do Star Trek first. Sure. Okay, so the, my favorite Star Trek film has got to be Wrath of Khan. 
<laughs> it's like everybody's favorite one, right? Yeah. yeah now, yeah. if you if you were to if you said, okay, you can't pick Wrath of Khan, right? I actually liked the Undiscovered Country. Oh my god, me too. That was a great movie. I I loved the Undiscovered Country, and I liked um, well, the Borg, uh, the Borg one. Although, well, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, if you're I I really feel bad about like Star Trek Nemesis. Well, that was that, terrible though. It was a bad movie. An amazing movie, and it wasn't. Um, I feel really awful about that movie, and I, I can see what they did with that because there's there's a lot of like touchstones that they're trying to use in that movie, and like the 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 relationship between him and the and the lady that live in the briar patch that uh, the, you think that Picard is going to end up with this girl is very much reminiscent of trying to to reach for some of those same emotional strings that they pulled with inner light. Yeah. Um, and it just didn't, it, they didn't quite get there. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, first contact has to be, has to be, if you're going to pick a f best one from the next generation films. Yeah. I, I, and I, I think I, I, I was surprised to hear you say undiscovered country because I think that's a really good one. Uh, Wrath of Khan, of course, is probably like you said, everybody's favorite. And um, First Contact, I thought First Contact was was really good. Yeah. But then again, you know, I like the Borg. I've said it how many yeah. times. And 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 you know, Generations <laughs> was kind of like you know maybe they should have just put that in as a TV series episode. Oh, there were some good luck. There were some really bad Star Star Trek movies. Uh, Generations, Voyage Home. Uh, you can even argue that the uh, the the motion picture was was bad. Um, yeah, the the search for Spock. Mm. Um, so yeah, there there were some really bad ones. So what about uh, what about Star Wars? What, what would you put for Star Wars? Your well, favorite? A New Hope. You know, a, a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, well, The Empire Strikes Back is a far uh -huh. superior movie." Um, uh, and and in many ways it is, but uh, for me, A New Hope is the one that got me the first time I went to see it in the movie theater. It was you know, I'm that. At the time, I was like six years old, and I can still to this day remember going to theater to see that movie. Which and is interesting because I, I'm the same way. And I think that was like one of the first movies that like my father brought me to because I had to see it. Uh, so yeah, there's like there's like fond memories that go along with the movie as well, right? Right. Now John is is throwing in his top five favorites: uh, Blade Runner, The Thing, Alien, Aliens, and The Matrix. Um, those are all amazing films. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, David Hood says uh, he's 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 picked the, my my the same combination of of Star Trek and Star Wars, uh, Wrath of Khan and New Hope. Um, so yeah, uh, for me, yeah, I mean those Wrath of Khan is the best of what those films could make at the time, and obviously they have the opportunity to, to make even better ones now, and they, they they've just dropped the ball. They can't. They they just they don't have it anymore as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, the, so, when, if, you're, if you're stuck, what picking your favorite Star Trek and Star Wars movies, the, that would have to be it. Um, now the matrix, <clears throat> another great movie franchise, right? Um, and you know, they're, they're making another matrix. Film. They're making, yes. I actually have up here on <clears throat> shelf. I have the original, uh, so when they were going to make the Matrix, the Wachowskis hired, like at the time, two of the top comic book artists to do all of their storyboards. They storyboarded the entire series, the entire first movie. Um, and I have the book up here that's the all of the uh, completed storyboards and the completed script. Neat. And it is a, an amazing book um, for the first movie. Uh, I, I don't. I don't like either of the subsequent movies as much as other people might. Um, but the first movie is gold. It is. And you know what, what was great about the matrix? It was so different for its time. It was so different. I, and not only the, like the concept of the film itself, but the look of the film, right. And, and some of the, the effects that they did in the film, it was so different. Uh, but I do have, um, I have a prediction for matrix four. Okay. okay? The name of it. And I want to see if I'm right. Okay. So there was the Matrix. There was the Matrix Reloaded. And then the Matrix Revolutions. 
And I really think the Matrix 4 is going to be Resurrection. Reboot. Re- <laughs> well, I don't know about reboot. I don't know if they'd use the word reboot. But like I think of uh, like Resurrection because maybe they get Neo comes back. Well, he is back. Right. But he was, like, he was like dead in the last film, though. All of the <clears throat> are back. So, um, no, uh, actually, they don't show him dead at the end of the last movie. No, they still get dragged away. Unconscious. They right. show the robots taking him away. Right. They don't show anything else. Right. Uh, you assume that this, he's dead. The, the, the thing is, is they've actually slotted because he's uh, – Keanu Reeves – is uh, doing, uh, he's got two franchises that are on their fourth movie that are coming out on the same day. So uh, Matrix 4 and John Wick 4 are coming out on the same day. Oh, he's not going to make any money at all. Not at all. (laughs) And yet, Mark, I I completely agree with you. Uh, Worst character in sci-fi, Jar Jar Binks. Um, Can, Can you come up with a worse character than Jar Jar Binks? Give me a minute. That's a tough. That's like tough. Um, okay, Ruby Rod from um What Ruby Rod is fantastic. Are you kidding me? We didn't even talk about that movie. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I actually love the fifth element. It's a multi pass. Uh and the, the comic book series, which they literally ripped the entire story from, is also good. It's called the Inkle I N C A L. It's a a Mobius uh, illustrated series. It's a French graphic novel. It's um, amazing. Um, yes, uh, Bill mentions uh, Jodorowsky's Dune. I've actually seen the, do- the the documentary. So Dune was originally going to be made into a movie in the mid-70s by a South American or Mexican film uh, uh, director. And uh, it had supposedly was going to have Salvador Dali and it was going to have Mick Jagger in it. It was going it was, it was to be all whacked out. The thing uh, that a lot of people may not know is a lot of the concept art people that work that were working on Dune with Jodorowsky ended up working with Ridley Scott in the original Alien movie. So uh, Geiger and uh, a lot of the same people that did the look of that movie actually just jumped from Dune to. Uh, you know, it's actually funny that 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 movie did not come up until now because that is one of my favorite sci-fi movies. What Dune? No. Oh, Fifth Element. Fifth Element. Yeah, oh, amazing movie. Great, right? great movie. Yeah. Like completely uh, entertaining. I loved all the characters in that movie, even Ruby Rod. Um, yeah, I, 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 if you haven't seen that one, that's another one you got to go see. I mean, sure. Gary Oldman in that movie is is uh, just just amazing in that movie um he did a string of movies i mean he did the professional um which was uh luke basson a uh, french uh movie director and uh he's also the guy that directed uh the fifth element and he also did um what's the movie with the really long and uh, the city with a thousand uh planets that was out last year or two years ago, uh, he he did. A, he's done a, quite a few sci-fi movies. Um, he also directed uh, the Taken series uh, with uh, Liam Neeson. Um, yeah, it's it's. It, uh, but yeah, the, the Fifth Element. You're like, why didn't they ever make a sequel to that? The Sixth Element. Why couldn't they keep going? Absolutely, I th- that was such. There were so many, so many classic lines uh, from that movie. So many classic scenes and everything. Uh, here's another movie that that nobody's talked about. Um, Interstellar. Oh, I love that movie. Do you love that movie? Yeah, that's a Nolan movie. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, there's so many people. There's so much overlap with the people in that movie and the people with the Dark Knight movies. Christopher Nolan just he likes to bring he uses a lot of the same actors and a lot of the movies that he's doing or did uh yeah I mean um Matthew McConaughey playing like a uh, <clears throat> astronaut that uh, turned farmer uh turned astronaut, turned astronaut. yeah and it's it also got that really weird psychedelic visual thing at the end where he falls through the black hole and he comes up in the library yeah, Very, I, I think I think the movie had me until the the end, and then it got a little bit kind of far fetched for me. But you know what? I, I love um, I love sci fi that tries to be real or realistic. Yeah. Right? 
Uh, and I, I think that's one of them. And I think another really, really good one, and you don't think of this when you think of sci-fi, but The Martian. Oh, that's a great movie. The Martian is a brilliant movie. Yeah. And and I, I have uh, very rarely do I read a book based on a movie. Like, like I'll read the book after the movie. Like, I very rarely do that. But if you haven't read the Martian book, or at least the book on tape, because that's what I do. I have a subscription to Audible. Well, the, the Audible book on tape. Now, this is the other thing that you may not know. The original uh, book on tape for uh, the Audible version is 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 being pulled. Um, and they're re-releasing a new version with Wesley Crusher doing the narration, Will Wheaton. Oh, no. Um, the guy that did the original version is like – He's like the uh, the the five star, uh, the best uh, book narrator. Like yes. I have quite a few. <clears throat> books, and I can't remember the guy's name right off the top of my head, but he he's an amazing. He's got an amazing voice. He's very expressive. He he can use different voices for different characters, and he keeps it up in his. You know, it's really hard when you're reading a book and you're changing voice from one character to another. And he. He he does it without like I'm sure they're like in a in a recording studio and they're like editing and fixing and patching and stuff. But um, yeah, uh, Will Wheaton is uh, doing the newest version. I don't know if if uh, the version you have is Will Wheaton or the oh R C Bray is the uh, definitely the R C Gray version. Yeah. So and, yeah, and it's actually good. It's actually um, oh, yeah. it's it's better than the movie. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of really really good stuff. A lot of differences between the book and the movie, and a lot of laugh out loud stuff in the book. It's good. No, yeah, um, and 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 actually, you know, I've actually got a book on tape that Will Wheaton has. Uh, he he's he's that that's one of the things that he's doing now is narrating audio books. Yeah, and he actually uh, this will be funny. This is one you would probably enjoy. It's a uh, a book called Red Shirts, <laughs> and um, it's a science fiction book very loosely based on star Trek and all the main characters are red shirts and so they uh, all die? well, they, they get to the bottom of why they're always dying. Oh, really? And it, it's, it's actually a very, it's a very fun. Listen. Um, if you, if you've got credits, it's a John Scalzi is the guy that writes it. Um, it's called red shirts. Yeah. You, you I, I tell you what, I, I walk every morning and I ride my bike every afternoon and this will be in my ears when I'm riding my bike this afternoon. I'm going to yeah, get yeah. Red the, uh, has written a, a, quite a lot of science fiction books, but, uh, they always have a little humor to them. And, um, this one is very fun. And, and you're right. The, David it, it, Will Wheaton isn't that bad. I, I actually, I really enjoy Will Wheaton's appearances on uh, the big bang theory. Well, when he used to do uh, the big bang theory, but, <laughs> If you watched um, any of the, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called. It's a show that Will Wheaton did on YouTube uh, after uh, every Picard episode. I can't remember the name of the show, but he's so over the top. He's so over the top giddy and silly that uh, it just it ma it makes him less believable. I don't know. But you're right. He, he, he definitely got a bad rap. <laughs> You know, crush crusher. Um, let's see. What else? We did this, we did this. We talked about everything. I didn't show you my lightsaber. Oh, yeah. Show us the lightsaber. Is it purple? It's everything. Oh. So it's this is what this is called a star killer. So it, it, this is from um like I don't know, Star Wars lore as opposed to uh the movies. And it has an exposed crystal chamber. So that's the, the crystal chamber right there. This was made by a guy called Megatooth Sith Sabers. He has like this little YouTube channel uh, and he creates these custom lightsabers. This one is weathered. Okay. It's got what's called a profi board. Um, and it, it, it doesn't use a single LED source. It uses LEDs that run the, the entire uh, thing. So if I turn my lights off here, I'll, I'll demo this for you. And it has, it has what they call smooth swing, okay? So if you've ever played with a toy lightsaber in the past, you know you really got to kind of shake them to get that, that whoosh sound. Yeah. Like this. You can hear it, like, just, just. You hear that? And you can yeah. see the, uh, you can see the crystal in there. And it's got a whole bunch of different, um, 
I guess you could call it fonts. So if I go to a different font now, not that button. I got to remember. I don't play with it enough. I go to. It plays. It plays sounds. <laughs> so like here's Kylo Ren's, and you can see it's got like a flame, uh -huh. and it's, the sound is completely different. I'm so geeking out right now. You are. Hold on, let me try. Imperium. Luke Skywalker. So here's Luke Skywalker, okay? And it's the classic green. Love this shit. Fucking love this shit. We never get to show that stuff any other time. No, this is what I should be reviewing. You see, it's on the it's on the Luke Skywalker font. So, you know, if you know anything about lightsabers, even though they're fake, you know they 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 run on the kyber crystals. So that's that's the green kyber crystal right there. It'll even tell me the um, the battery status if I click and hold this. Three point seven two volts. So I know I'm gonna have to charge it pretty soon. <laughs> so uh, Paul Martin or Matten, I'm sorry. Um, I want to address your question because uh, Heinlein is probably one of my favorite writers of all time. Um, he you know he wrote Starship Troopers. Um, I'm trying to think of things that like other people would know. But uh, you, you mentioned Stranger in a Strange Land, which is probably in the top two or three of his books that I like. Um, the number one favorite, and this is another one that, that uh, Phil might want to put on his books on tape list, is called um, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Uh, and it's uh, pro it, it is my favorite book ever. Um, uh, specifically, though, it is my favorite Heinlein book. Uh, if you haven't read science fiction, though, if you want to read science fiction, Heinlein is a great place to start because a lot of his books aren't overly technical. They don't, you know, but yeah, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress is the best sci-fi ever as far as I'm concerned. What was it called? The Moon is, say that again? The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. The Moon is a Harsh, and, and that's how They do great. have it on Audible because I actually, I, I have the that Audible version as well as the uh, the paperback over there on the other side of the room. Um, Heinlein is just, yeah, the, you know, and, you know, Bill, Bill Tarling brings up the Ender's Game series. Um, the the books, the, the first book is, is, the it's it's amazing it's a, you know if you're if you're a reader that that is um actually i haven't read one in that series that's awful but that first one is is is, is, <clears throat> is, is awesome to uh to mark um, it is an 18650 in there and <laughs> to, to paul isn't capricorn one where they faked the moon landing is, was that the movie is that bruce dern I'm trying to remember if Bruce Dern is in, is the is the in that one. Or is that, who's in Capricorn one? I, I think that's the one where they they faked the um the moon landing. Uh, I have to look it up because that one doesn't stick out right. And Elliot Gould is in that one. Yes, and it oh, is Mars the, landing. Is okay, Mars. I was close. It was, it was the Mars landing. Capricorn one was. Wow, oh. James Berlin, Sam Waterston, and O.J. Simpson are astronauts. <laughs> hey, O.J. Simpson, imagine that. Well, you know, I guess he could fit into the the gloves and the uh, the spacesuit. Yeah, but uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, uh, Mark brings up Ready Player One um, and says that the the film was so far off the book that it hurt, um, but. If you're just looking at pure like popcorn nostalgia, because that's my all that all the references in that in that in that movie are from my time, from my childhood. Um, it is fun to watch that movie just to see all the visual references. You know, you see Darth Vader fighting, you know, other people in that. You see uh, characters from different video games. Um, all the uh, classic Atari references I got. Because I had the Atari Twenty Six Hundred when I was a kid, my parents waited in line to get Pac Man for me when, for my birthday one year, um, you know, because that was the shit when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I, I I enjoyed Ready Player One. I thought that was a fantastic movie, and I, I did like the the nostalgia aspect of that movie. Yeah, the, I mean sure. everything everything in that movie <clears throat> hit all the right notes. I mean, 
Spielberg is older than me. Um, but like, like he knew what visual touchstones to hit. And also the shining is possibly one of my favorite books and movies of all time, even though the book and the movie really don't coincide very well. Um, but yeah, Stanley Kubrick made that movie. Uh, a lot of people dog on it, but yeah, it's possibly one of my favorite movies ever. What, did you uh, just say The Shining? I was, I was, yeah, gonna, yeah, I was. That's not a science fiction reference, even though it could possibly be. No, but I'm curious. Did you see um, uh, what was it, Doctor Death? Yes, Doctor uh, Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. Yeah, I, I actually. Uh, and the thing, the thing that I like, and I watched, I just recently watched those movies back to back during the pandemic. Uh, was the 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 scenes that were in Doctor Sleep that were designed specifically to visually key with scenes that were done in The Shining? They did a very good job. Um, I don't. I only watched the director's cut of Doctor Sleep, so I don't know what's not what's in that that's not in the in the in the theatrical version, um, and what scenes were added and so forth and so on. But yes, I mean, even though, and you may not notice this, but the guy that's playing. Um, the dad in Dr. Sleep is Elliot from E.T. Is it really? It is. I did not know that. I did not know. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I watched it. I, I, I didn't and, think it was that bad. And in this day and age when, um, like, all the Marvel movies and the superpowers and everything are sort of, like, the new thing to to tie in the, the shine uh, – and bring show that there are other people that have different versions of the shine. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and kind of make it into like, Oh, this is an evil superhero movie. Cause that's the way it kind of felt. Even though then also bring in the fact that you have this super haunted building and you know, the, the main character has all of uh, Danny has all of those ghosts locked away in his mind. Yeah. Uh, Paul Saturn three. Thank you for reminding me because that's, that's another great robot. Hector. Uh, Hector was yeah. a really cool, scary, frightening robot in that, in that movie. Oh, in uh, the, what is it called? The demon seed. Demon. Uh, Proteus is a, 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 that may be a, that may be a very obscure, like sci-fi horror movie. Um, but that's one you could look up. Uh, Outland is an amazing Western uh, space science fiction movie. Um, Paul and John both mention Outland. Uh, Akira, which is a, a Japanese animated uh, sci-fi slash weird kind of movie. Uh, I love it so much I have every episode or every issue of the graphic series. Um, that is, a, you know, amazing. You know, um, when... when um... When Capricorn One was mentioned before, I don't know why, but it reminded me of, of another sci-fi movie. Do you remember the movie Hangar Eighteen? Yeah, where they find the like the the alien uh, ship and the, mm -hmm. the, the two aliens in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. Uh, another somebody brought up Flight of the Navigator earlier. Uh, when you're talking about like um, sci-fi Disney, you brought up the Black Hole. Flight of the Navigator was an amazing film. I mean, for and. You think about the time that it came out and to produce the flying scenes before there was CGI where that mirror finished spaceship is flying around. Uh, that's, that's an amazing, visually amazing uh, for a Disney movie at the time. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, uh, let's be sexist for a little while. Okay. Sean earlier, way earlier asked hottest space chicks. <laughs> okay. Or sci -fi. okay. Uh, ever. Well, he he said, "Who's who's your top?" Well, Wilma Deering would be on that list, right? I like I, this, I'm uh, the same uh, way. Ahura from the original series. I think Michelle Nichols was was uh, you know in that little it, look down there beside Data below you. Look at that. I mean, that is uh, amazing gams, amazing gams. Um, yeah, but Dimitri would look cute in that little skirt. I mean, let's, let's be honest. <clears throat> um, we were talking about Logan's Run. The the girl who was in Logan's Run was yeah. hot, and we got to see her naked. Yeah. And, and when you didn't see her naked, you saw half of her naked because whatever it was that she was wearing just kind of like covered her front and her back. Mm -hmm. So when she was standing sideways, you could like to pretty much see everything. Yeah. Right. Um, oh my God, Bill Barbarella. 
Remember the yeah. orgasm machine in Barbarella? Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a what a what a fun show! What a what a fun trip down memory lane this was. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I get to blow off some steam and and talk about things that we love um, that don't like require us to have to get all political and yelly and you, you know all that nonsense. Yeah. I mean, I, I hate that we have to do it, but we do have to do it. The you know. Um, uh, the the girl now this same actress played in the original series Star Trek the original series she was um, in the cage she was the main female actress in the cage was that Jeffrey Hunter's wife in or real you're about Roddenberry's wife no no number two was Jerry uh, was was Majel Roddenberry okay but Captain Pike who was played by Jeffrey Hunter. Um, was it Jeffrey Hunter? Yeah. Um, what the, the blonde lady that was with the, the, I can't remember the, the aliens on that, uh, that was disfigured. She was hot, but she was also, I think the green girl, I think she was the, Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, the the one who had the uh, the illusion of beauty. Yes, she was in uh, the cage. the the original yeah. the original original, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, the, Jolene Blaylock. Yeah, I would agree with you, John. Uh, that, definitely hot. Seven and nine. Jerry Ryan. Uh, definitely a hot sci-fi uh, female. You could. Uh, um, oh my God, aliens. What the hell's her name? Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. Right? I mean, Although I, I've never found myself attracted to Sigourney Weaver for whatever reason. I mean, um, in the scene in, in Ghostbusters when she's been. Um, uh, oh, yeah. In the, in the white, the white flowing, whatever it was that she was wearing. She's on the piano and her hair's all in. All, right. all right. She looked good there. She um. <laughs> Karen, of course, Barbarella is retarded, by the way. Uh, retarded uh, sets triggers people, by the way, now. Um, but uh, but that's the whole purpose of Barbarella. Yeah, right? Jerry Ryan, seven of all. Uh, Jerry Ryan is a seven of nine. Mm -hmm. uh, well, hell, if any, I mean, Battlestar Galactica, the remake, uh, six. Uh, the red dress. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, she's you know she played. Now this funny after after Battlestar she played in Lucifer and she was God's uh, wife. She was the mother of all the angels uh, in that series. And now she plays uh, Dracula on another series. She's like the female Dracula. Jessica Alba has been in a, a bunch of different uh, science fiction um, stuff. Uh, and, and see, I wouldn't say this ordinarily, but when she was in the bikini lying on Jabba the Hutt, Carrie Fisher was hot. Carrie Fisher was, was yeah. Uh, Perseus uh, from, you know, uh, Star Trek, the motion picture. Even though she didn't have any hair, I think that even made her even more hot. Um, uh, um, Jane Fonda is Barbarella. Yes, right? Jane Fonda. Barbara. Uh, Jessica Six was um, Logan's Run. Yes. And it, but yeah, there, uh, yeah. her real name here? Uh, uh, Jen, Jenny or Gutter. Mm. Okay. Um, Karen Gillan. Uh, from Doctor Who and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, Avengers, she's she's a very attractive lady. Yeah, just Alba too. Yeah, I, I think from that's right. a Dark Angel. If you if you want to go way back, machine her first TV show was called Dark Angel. It was a James Cameron science fiction show. Um, yeah, uh, Carrie Fisher's talked about many times about having uh you know constant like shame during uh the time between star wars and uh empire and jedi to maintain a certain shape and size and they were constantly on her and they caused her to have an eating disorder later um Th this is good this is actually fun that i'm doing like, like a couple searches on the on the side here because it reminded me of another uh sci-fi movie that I, I actually liked uh and and it's another hot female character um flash gordon Right, Flash Gordon and the uh, the daughter of Ming. Oh, uh, yeah, I Princess or Princess Aura. She Aura was her name, but I'm trying to remember the actress's name. She was Ornella Muti. Yes, uh, she was she was uh, not in a whole bunch of stuff. But here, no. let me let me show you this. Uh, somebody actually sent this to me to show to you. 
<laughs> well, there goes that fantasy. No, you, you've <laughs> totally, totally lost your attraction to the Princess yep. Leia. Oh, uh, well. Now that you've seen the Demetrius mashup. Yeah, it was hot while it lasted, I guess. Uh, the girl from Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. She was cute. Uh, who was that? That was Christiana Loken. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. She was the um, TX. She, she's she was in um uh, quite a lot of science fiction video game type movies. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Trisha Helfer was uh what, when I was saying about six from Battlestar Galactica. That's the actress's name. Um, thank you, John Vaness, for the reminder. Um, the the girl that played Boomer on um Battlestar Galactica, the remake, uh, the Asian or the Asian girl, the Asian girl. She's Very on Y five O. She's also very attractive. All right, should, uh, I mean, somebody mentioned it before, so maybe we can uh, call out uh, Princess Vespa from Spaceballs. <laughs> yes, yeah. Daphne Zuniga. Yeah, wow, you you got the name. See, like I, I, I'm so bad with names, that's why I have to look shit up. Yeah, I have to remember. I mean, I remember those those ones that are like in my list. Um, you know. Uh, there are so I mean I mean if we're going to be all uh, politically incorrect and naming off hot chicks from science fiction, um, yeah, you might as well at least get their names. Right. <laughs> and um, this is a good one too, and one we should have gotten. Um, Mila jo uh, Jovovich, um, Lilu in fifth. Yeah, I mean, she's also Alice from Resident Evil. Yep. Um, she's the, the blood queen from the new remake of Hellboy, which was awful. I mean, just awful. Uh, oh, uh, men in black Two, the evil woman in men in black Two. uh, Oh yeah. With tentacles for her fingers. Laura Flynn Boyle. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, she, she was hot. Um, so yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of attractive women. There have uh, been yeah. science fiction movies. Uh, should, should we do uh, – because I think Karen was watching before. Uh, are there any other females that are watching this show? Should we do uh, Hottest Guys in Sci-Fi? Well, okay. it would be hard for me to pick out anybody. Well, I, I, I'll go through the list that I'm looking at here, okay? We got to be fair. We got to be fair. Han Solo, right? Harrison Ford, right? Would you agree? I can see, I can see that he's a, a manly man, you know, that he's – uh, stereotypical action star for the time, yeah. Uh, here, here's a good one. Um, because we didn't mention the movie Oblivion, which actually, which I actually liked. Um, Jack Harper, uh, Tom Cruise, yeah. Uh, Snake Plissken, Escape oh, from New York. Well, that's, I, mean, I, I can't believe I didn't a badass, that. right? As many as many John Carpenter references as I made in this, and I didn't mention Escape from New York. That's 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 a shame. Yeah, I, I, that, that's all I'm going to mention. That's that's. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, speaking of Escape from New York, there were rumors that they were going to remake Escape from New York. Um, but who could, you know, if you were going to recast Snake Plix Pliskin, who yep. would you? I mean, who could you possibly get that could could play that role? I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were they were talking about The Rock, and I was like, "There's no way." I like The Rock, but that is just not the role for him. Yes, Scarlett Johansson is hot in anything, Mark. In really, anything. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 there, there's no. I can't say I've seen her. You, you know, we've been at this for two and a half hours now. You know that. See, yeah. I told you. I did. You said you said it was going to be a ninety minute show, and I said no way. I said no way. We're going to start talking, and before you know it, it's going to be two hours, and now it's like two and a half hours. I well, knew this was going to happen, and you know why it happened? Because, because we're throwing the hell out of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Paul, actually, not Paul, Bill. Um, actually made a comment. <laughs> what Bill say? He says, uh, make this geeker show a weekly podcast with Phil. And um, I'm not adverse to doing it on a semi-regular basis, but uh, that would be up to Phil. And I know that Paul, actually Paul was going to pop in, but um, we got so busy I never even sent Paul the link, and he even showed up halfway through the show. Um, so there will, po there will be future uh, Geeks Are Us episodes. Um, whether uh, it's Phil and somebody else or me and Phil, or we've got the setup. We might as well use it. It may not be a regularly scheduled thing, but 
you know, there's no reason why periodically we can't just blow off some fucking steam and talk about something other than what we normally talk about. Absolutely. I would like it. It might even happen like shows like or, or episodes like this or shows like this might even happen to like uh, we'll say after a big sci fi movie comes out oh, yeah. or, after, or like after an episode like uh, of, of some TV sci fi series like like I would have loved. And, uh, and and I said it earlier in the show. I said I, I always wanted to um, uh, have a conversation with Grim Green about Star Wars because he's a, I invited him. He's a huge Star Wars fan, right? And like I said, he loved um, he loved Last Jedi. I thought it was an abomination, right? And um, see, like Rise of like I would have loved to have had this show after I just saw Last Jedi because I would have had like a whole lot of shit to say. I would I would have complained the entire time. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't like that movie from when um, Luke Skywalker threw the uh, the the lightsaber over his shoulder. They they lost me right there on that movie. How dare you do something like that? Uh, and they even tried to make up for it in the last movie, right? So they knew they fucked up. They knew they fucked up, uh, and they tried to make up for it. But like like the so the last movie did the the, the um, Rise of Skywalker. They did a lot of fan service. In that movie, yeah, that movie was designed specifically to get my my generation that loved the original movies yes. back into the theater and bring our kids. Yes, absolutely, I I, I completely agree. Um, like uh, th- there was just so much fan service done, you know. And the thing is, I liked the movie. I I, I really really enjoyed the movie, but I also acknowledge the fact that it was thrown together. Yeah. It just felt very, very thrown together, um, and 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 a movie that could have easily the movie itself have been two or three movies, right? I want to know, like Palpatine just comes back out of nowhere. Like, where did he come from? How did he build all those fucking ships? Well, apparently, it's really easy to make star destroyers. I guess I don't know, but um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, there's there's plenty of opportunities uh, in this this you know I, I I built the show background and there I mean it's not like I'm not we're never going to do this again. I don't want to make any promises. Um, we got other things that we're doing, but uh, we're not throwing the concept of doing a geek show away. Uh, when there's a, when there's a reason for us to do one, we're going to do one. I'm sure. Um, uh, you know. When, when when a new series comes out and Phil and I say, hey, let's watch this series and talk about it, then we'll do that. Um, yeah, there, yeah. There, there are so many shows on YouTube that that just go over episodes. That I mean, that's that's what they do, right? Yeah. Uh, like I was saying before, like Westworld. When I watch an episode of Westworld, I have to go to YouTube to have somebody explain to me what I just saw. You know, and maybe we could do something like that here. Maybe that would be fun for people. Well, you know, we, we you know Paul brought up the Expanse, um, and and I already watched the Expanse. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure you have some time. You could watch the expanse and at some point, maybe we'll do an expanse special and talk about all the stuff we loved and hated about the expanse. Um, See, now, now I have to watch it. Now, now you're uh, forced to watch and, it. You know, Paul's got an idea. I could bring Paul on and do a, a Jerry Anderson uh, show. That's uh, yeah. talking about all the, the, the different Jerry Anderson shows. Cause they're very British uh, a lot, you know, but UFO space, 1999, uh, the Thunderbirds, uh, Space Precinct, which is uh, a really, really, really cheesy. It's so cheesy. It's amazing um, science fiction police show. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, we're, we're going to do these. Bill, I'm sure Bill is probably would love to to, to participate because he's also one of us geeks. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I, I did something like a little bit and I wanted to do more with Bill. Um, when, when Bill was helping me out with the smoker show when Dimitri wasn't available, we kind of like went into this, this like weird little after hours thing after the show where we would just bullshit about sci-fi for a little bit. So Bill would definitely be another good guy to have. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, like I said, I invited, I've invited Grim Green multiple times to do shows with me or to come on and be a guest. Um, something always gets in the way, but I did reach out to him when I came up with the concept and you said you were in because Wait, I thought that would you, be amazing. Did you invite him first or me first? Like, was you. I, was I like your sloppy second? I you saw- were my first, you were my first pick. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> you know, I, I've said this many times. Um, <laughs> it was your vaping show that I went to on YouTube when I first became a vapor. So yeah, I mean, I've, I've always known you were a bit of a geek anyway. 
Um, so yeah, you were my go-to guy. Um, but yeah, Gr Grim would be, you know, Grim would be a great get as a guest to get on and, and, and specifically have target specific Star Trek questions for, cause you know, that's his deal. And, and by the way, after I saw the rise of Skywalker, I, I sent Grim uh, a little message on Facebook and I said, um, I, it was something like I was right. Or did, or did you think of me? When, when, you know, the big reveal, when you found out that Ray was a Palpatine, because like I said, I said that to him years ago in France and he wrote back, he's like, you know, I was watching that movie when that came out. He was like, I was like that damn Phil. <laughs> so, so I was thought about when Grim Green was watching that movie. That, that makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, this has been fun. It's been great. We've, we've, we've. We've, we've shot the wad. We talked about everything that I, we had discussed and planned, and, and I think it turned out good. I mean, I, I'm still learning this new platform, but I, I really love this. This is so user-friendly, um, and it also gives us access to the comments right away, so I don't have to have another window open, so it's pretty cool. I would say it was perfect, but you didn't have audio on the intro video. I, I Yeah, I will have to fix that in post. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you so much for including yeah. me. This, this was a this was a very nice, uh, relaxing break, especially with the video that I just put out and <laughs> the phone call that I had with my mother. So now I'm going to download red shirts. I'm going to uh, get on my bike and go for a little ride. Yeah. So have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, you know, signing off from the inaugural Geeks R Us special. And uh, you know, if we do it again, we'll we'll put the word out and everybody will know about it. Uh, just enjoy your your binge watching during the pandemic and stay safe and uh, don't don't get the COVID. Yeah, for sure. Stay safe. All right, Patrick, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching.